when the glow of the blood-stained moon shines upon the land, the aimless spirits of slain monsters return to flesh. The world is threatened once again. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fluffenhammer. Hang on tight, your assholes will not enjoy the experience. <laughs> every man lives, not every man truly dies. I know we're perfect strangers and I'm reaching out to you. We got to be together. So like the slime ash stuff has just started right away. We're not even pretending anymore, right? No, no, this is more nurgly. This is more nurgly. It's oh gonna be, right, okay. Yeah, it's going to be just like a, an emptying of every bowel you've ever had. Um, Okey dokes. You know, the bowels that you uh, will have in past lives and the bowels you will have in future lives, all of them <laughs> emptying into your current bowels. It's like <laughs> the human centipede, but only one person. Just this constant <laughs> tirade of bowel. It's the quantum human centipede, right? Where all yeah. of your potential probabilities and incarnations are empty. The poo vortex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do think Quantum Bowel was a really bad remake for Dr. Samuel Beckett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you used that photograph as well, Andy. Thank you. That's one of my oh, favorites. That's a good one. Yeah, that's I like one of my it. favorites. That's from um, an event that I did uh, with regards to the Born in Blood project. I was up on stage reading my stories and talking to people. I think it's because you look like a wizard casting a spell on people. That too. That's <laughs> kind of what I was doing. <laughs> like your hands are about to fire a fireball at someone. Yeah, it was fun. That was such a fun event. I've never done. You've it also before. got a lantern over your head as well. Yes, which I do. The whole, there was cool. like all this stuff on set. It was like it, Nick had like decorated the stage to look like a like a little grotto kind of thing where I was sitting and. <laughs> you know relaying my stories from it was good fun mm. it was really mm. good fun um bloody knackered by the end of it you know oh, just yeah. exhausted myself doing it oh it is being on stage wipes you out the amount of yeah. uh, internal energy that you've got to use is mm -hmm. uh, it's massive it's something i really miss to be honest i miss doing live things and being on stage and oh i uh, loved it i loved it's it i'm one of my I'm favorite things in the world anything like that again you know anything like that i'm eyeing some of the horror cons at the moment and like the, you know the the independent literature cons um to see if i can convince them to let me get up on stage and talk at people for a while <laughs> people should pay us to tour doing a live um in the flesh rpg campaign <laughs> well, we just go from fun. town to town <laughs> just like doing chapters of an rpg like a um i don't know wrath of glory or something like that and we're just like <laughs> did no, you say rap rap of glory rap no rap of, <laughs> rap of oh. glory but now it's going to be rap of glory yes 90s um, rap hopefully not current day rap yeah it, it's just going to be warren g Oh, he said Ram, I, I, I pictured like a sandwich, you know? <laughs> oh, no, no. I, yeah, I meant like a vanilla rice kind of style. <laughs> yeah, we're on totally different levels. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hungry or something, George? Actually, I am, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we must feed the George, and you feed him by letting us go on tour, uh, playing various RPG <laughs> games. Uh, <laughs> full second Ed D&D &D games. and. Hungry. Uh, souls <laughs> hungry for dice bring me more dice uh, <laughs> hello i'm adam with me of course over there is george hello say, uh, say, say hello to the nice people george but unfortunately george got ahead of me and said it before i could make I the did. joke i did i will say hello again if you like you know please do please do hello and hello. Over... hello 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 and here of course is undead andy Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I've just realised with this soundboard, I could give Andy a uh, intro music, <laughs> like, like you were a wrestler. An absurd, 
Do you actually have rude. music like lined up? I don't, but I'm going to have to sort oh. that out for next time. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I don't know who I'll give you as a wrestling theme. Um, uh, oh, the Dudleys, maybe. <laughs> which which era? Because sometimes their music got really bad. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the Power Man Five Thousand. Uh, oh, get on the bomb! Get on the bomb! Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the chat's not working. Ah, no, that's a shame. Yeah. Uh, let me just pull it open and see if I can work out uh, why that's not working, because that's just Can't not see what good. all the lovely people are saying. Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, I've opened it in the app. Uh, so, Darren, if you can open it in the app, it, that seems to work. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. I will uh, test it by saying hello. Yes, that works. Yeah, hey! it works. I'm I can done. see it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, everybody. <laughs> What's everyone been up to in the last fortnight since we recorded? Because it has been a fortnight. Mm. Yeah. We, we, guys, we're managing to keep to this once every two week schedule. Don't, right. don't jinx it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Come on. Zeech could be listening. He will curse us. You know what he's like. I uh, imagine that. And like, all the time just gets all wibbly wobbly. And then uh, next thing you know, five episodes just drop on the same day that we haven't uh -huh. recorded yet. That's exactly the kind of thing Zeech would do. That would be a really good April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop an episode that we haven't recorded yet. <laughs> like, if in, in uh... the future <laughs> Gruff wants to draw our own space frog, we we <laughs> could I, I could make a star background and we could have a like an official Fluff and Hammer space frog. Because I, 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 I don't know why I really like having the little happy frog. Just I think it's great. In space. I think you it's absolutely do, great. You could do a plague toad. Gruff, you can then yeah. swap it out and do a mushroom toad for the goblins. Good. You could then mm -hmm. do, uh, I don't know, just a really obese person again for, for Slanesh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a mecha toad for the Necrons. Oh, yeah, yeah. A squid. What I'm actually thinking of is Obviously. a squid toad. Yeah. toad. Mm -hmm. Terminator dude. toad. Toadinator. <laughs> the Toadinator. <laughs> I think, wouldn't the Toadinator be someone like half robot who just comes up to you and starts telling you you're great? <laughs> I suppose it would, yeah. I'm thinking Grimer from Sonic the Comic. Oh my god, yeah. He oh, would be the Toadinator. Wow, there's a there's a blast from the past. Yes, Dr. Robotnik. You're mm. just so great. <laughs> Did anyone else have a voice for Grimer? Is he just me? Oh god, yeah. I mean he was written like that, wasn't he? Even yeah. I mean the way he was drawn and everything, he was the Igor archetype, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, you're supposed master. to talk like Peter Lorre, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, master. <laughs> yes, Dr. Robotnik. I'm sure the hedgehog's been blown to smithereens. Fuck, 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 fuck this. Fuck war and all that shit. Let's just talk about Sonic the Comic for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Could, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a significant part of the past, definitely. <laughs> Oh, I've been a um, <laughs> friend of the podcast, <laughs> oh, a friend of the podcast, I, should, oh, I won't say any names, just because I, I don't know if he feels comfortable or not with it being said, came to me and said, is there any way that we can talk about the DC Comics Flintstones um, comics <laughs> uh, at any point? <laughs> is there any way we can do that? It's like, is I it mean, J. Michael Straczynski? It was not. And I was like, <laughs> I, I wish it was. I, I wish we could. I don't see how it would fit with the fluff and hammer, but on the other hand, I might just do it anyway because yeah. that comic is fucking incredible. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, can, um, you can do it as like a Patreon show. Yeah, you know, off yeah, topic. absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. We've done lots of really weird off the wall stuff for that, so why right, not? True. Yeah. And uh, have, have either of you guys read the the Flintstones comic? No, no. I can't say right. I have. Right. Uh, the closest thing that exists <clears throat> to it is Transmet. I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> You've never read Warren Ellis's Transmopolitan? No. no. Holy shit! I'm, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna mail you issues. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Because it's mm, mm. Um, yeah. So it takes the idea of the Flintstones and it overlays uh, how society deals with PTSD. It overlays the how society adapts and changes and how it crushes people underfoot by doing so um it deals with mental health it deals with um generations not understanding how uh, new generations feel and think it is a freaking masterpiece and i don't 
say that lightly. That sounds really good. I mean, like it's, DC did that with a lot of the Hanna Barbera properties, didn't they? They did, did Snagglepuss yeah. as well. Did you ever read that? I didn't read the Snagglepuss. No. <laughs> so good. I mean, honestly, a genuinely brilliant comic. It conflated Snagglepuss with Truman Capote. All right. And made him like a, a gay revolutionary, a playwright, an icon <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, right? In McCarthyite USA. Heavens it's, to Murgatroyd. <laughs> yeah, right. And a lot of the other Hanna-Barbera characters are, are there with him. So um, Quick Draw, McGraw is there, yeah. um, who's a closeted cop. Um, Huckleberry Hound mm -hmm. is there. It's so good. It's not a funny comic by any stretch of the imagination it's actually no. really bloody dark um you know trigger warnings by the content yeah, yeah. warnings for a lot if you go out and read this comic but it's very good it's very good i would highly recommend it one of my uh, favorite things about the Flintstones comic is on a single uh, pair of pages one page starts with them watching TV, and the guy on the TV going, there's been a brand new invention. Stuff. You can buy stuff. Do you need it? <laughs> no. Do you want it? Yes, you do. You can buy stuff. And on the next page, it's Fred and Barney sitting in a bar as Fred is openly crying because he can't deal with the fact that they killed the other hominid. They <laughs> committed genocide on the other uh, hominid. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> post-ape hominid. <laughs> and you're just like... The fuck am I reading? This yeah, is that sounds good. That sounds this is really something good, else. Actually. Yeah, it's it's it was, it's it was, it was, like, who who did this? Did you say was it DC? It was DC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they got a hold of the the Hanna Barbera. They did, yeah, copyright, yeah. Obviously, you know, yeah, well, they did a lot, brothers, didn't they? Yeah. They did a lot with the uh, the Hanna Barbera characters at they that did. period. They also did a load of crossover stuff, and that the, yeah. those are just weird. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting. Um, it's really interesting. I like those comics quite a lot. I mean, as I say, the Snagglepuss one is is fabulous. It's really, really good. You're going to have to get me that. Uh, yeah, so. I mean, if I've, I've got it knocking about, I'll send it to you. Um, it's knocking about in one of my one of the boxes from my <laughs> my the renovation of my place. So I will uh, dig it out and send that to you. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. As I say, it's 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 not an easy read. It's quite dark. It's quite unpleasant. No, no, I, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Ace. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm eyeing up my uh, my Gorman Gast trilogy books at the oh, moment. Going, wow. is it is it time? Is it time? I reread <laughs> those last year, the Gorman Gast mm -hmm. books, all of them, including Titus alone. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's stone cold masterpiece. I mean, it is one of the great fantasy novels. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, trilogies of novels ever ever written um again really hard to read i mean especially that third one titus alone where it is it is uh mervyn peak having a breakdown on yeah, the page absolutely, you know absolutely lo literally losing his mind on the page it's it's so hard to read it's so because you can feel that you can actually feel the writer's degenerative condition coming yeah. off the page at you and it's really unpleasant it's really really unpleasant but it's very very good as well I, I'm very aware that uh, if we're not careful, we're going to end up talking about yeah. books that nobody else has heard of, or yeah. I'm going to get into a conversation about uh, the fact that I have read the entirety of Injustice. We and we are. We'll I have, have thought, to do. We'll I have, have thoughts to, for like a um, thing. Yes, Andy, the uh, the tie-in comic to the oh. Nether Realms. Oh. I'm sorry. For one of the uh, for one of the Patreon shows, we will have to discuss um, Gorman Gast. Definitely, oh, that would be a really good one. Actually, I that think would that'd be, be a uh... great one. Mm, that would do be you think? Do you think George should read Injustice? All of it. I, I don't think anyone should read Injustice. <laughs> <laughs> the Injustice is a comic series where. If you imagine a flooded Earth, like Waterworld, right? You remember the film oh, Waterworld? I love Waterworld. <laughs> Same. It's sh it's shit. It's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know how in Waterworld there are these tiny, tiny little like mountain tops that have come up, and that's dry land, mm -hmm. and, and and that's the only land in a sea, a sea of shit, mm -hmm. right? That is injustice. Where every now and again a peak comes out, and you're just like, 
actually, no, this is a really good character study of Harley Quinn as a uh, uh, somebody who's been in an abusive relationship and how she cannot escape it because she doesn't mm-hmm. feel that she is worthy of escaping it. Turn the next page. Nightwing just fell over a rock and broke his neck and died. <laughs> <laughs> what the shit am I reading? Uh, yeah, he's a bit but, clumsy, that lad. But, <laughs> Yeah, Nightwing. Yeah, the prodigy to Batman. It's like, Whoops. Get it, brilliant. What the, what the, and then you've got, like, I'm halfway through, like, uh, book two, and I'm going, I can't get my head around the fact that Lex Luthor and Superman were friends before this. It's like, <laughs> what, what is going on? It's, at a very base level, you don't understand what you're trying to subvert. <laughs> it's, it's like, on it, I read all five books, though, because... Uh, yeah. It was like reading a car crash. It was. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't tear my eyes off the sheer level of shit that, and how it. Oh my god, how it all gets solved is the laziest bullshit I've ever seen in my life. Mm. So you, you, I'm, I'm off on a rant now. I apologise. We will no, get I mean, to the Warhammer I, I stuff totally in a bit. I totally get it. I mean, that's kind of what put me off a lot of the superhero comics. To be perfectly honest, when I used to read them, it's the, the yeah. lazy fucking endings to the story arcs. Uh, Injustice and spoiler if you don't want to know about it Injustice ends because Batman opens up a dimensional gateway to another DC universe and gets good Superman to come and beat a bad Superman yeah so it is effectively it's the deus ex machina yeah Yeah. it's it's just like oh here's the bullshit we pulled out of our backside because we need to resolve this situation I remember like when I was a teenager and I started reading the Spider-Man comics and at that Mm -hmm. point it was just at the beginning of the clone saga which I know everybody hates what people forget is the beginning of the clone saga is actually really good it's great it's really good it's actually moving everything on you've got an adult peter parker who's got a career and a relationship he's married you know he's got a kid on the way you've got Mm -hmm. this existential crisis with ben riley turning up who is effectively a you know at this point a clone of him um and then you have that whole thing where you find out that the peter parker you've been following in the comics for the last five years is actually the clone and ben is the original one and that's brilliant that's actually fantastic and at the, I remember reading the end of the Clone Saga and just not reading any further. It's just like, fuck this. Yeah. Fuck this a thousand times over. Because they didn't... That's not the ending they wanted to do. You can so clearly see that. They caved to... They did that thing that like popular franchises do when they caved to the worst elements of the fan base. The mm-hmm. people who didn't like what was happening. You know, who didn't like the fact that... like all of this complexity had been introduced and they just wanted the same stuff over and over and over again. You, I hated it. it. I you hated s- it so much. You kind of seen it at the moment now with Spider-Man. I, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, we will get back to Warhammer in a minute. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> um, you've seen it at the moment with the current Spider-Man run, which mm. uh, is doing everything in its power to make sure that Peter Parker and Mary Jane are not a couple. I, <laughs> that's, I, that's what bothers me. That's what I really hate about the superhero comics, I'll be honest. It's ridiculous. It's the, it's the big reset button that comes along and just undoes all of the fucking storytelling. Yeah. It narks me to the nth degree. I hate that in all storytelling. I just dislike it because it makes the stories pointless yeah. it makes them impotent if there's always going to be a big reset button at the end of every single story arc it doesn't matter what you do you can create the most apocalyptic scenario imaginable if you've got a big reset button none of it matters yeah no, none absolutely. of it matters if nothing sticks nothing matters i've been talking on twitter a lot recently about uh, how over the last sort of decade or so my love of comics is massively diminished mm-hmm. um and it 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 just i can't get excited about comics and then i read spider-man life story and mm-hmm. that rekindled my love of the medium so much yeah. is that good yeah oh, it's it's beautiful so it's the um out of continuity story so it's got a beginning a middle and an end yeah and it's spider-man aging properly from 1963 right the way through to modern day Right, that's cool. I mean, that's interesting, right? That it, That is interesting. It takes beats from every decade and it absorbs them into the story and it makes sense and it is gloriously mm. good. And between that and Immortal Hulk, which if anybody takes any recommendation I ever give, go read Immortal Hulk. Mm-hmm. Because 
it's there are good, moments apart from a few times where it gets very preachy out of nowhere. Yeah, that and is it's, true. it's very aggressively preachy when it's not doing that stuff. It's really good. Immortal I, Hulk is that the one where the Hulk becomes like an eco terrorist? Is that no, is that that no? One, it's um, basically Hulk. Devil Hulk takes over. And right. Okay. There's a lot of stuff about the Green Door, the One Below All. Um, oh yes, I've read those. Yeah, they are very yeah. good comics, actually. Taking yeah. Hulk and turning him into childhood trauma. Yeah. Is, yeah. It is so wonderful, and well, wonderful is the wrong word, but it, it's heartbreaking. You know, having the the normally terrifying Hulk just being a kid is. Mm. Oh yes, I remember reading those. They were good. The metaphysics of it was fabulous. Ah, I mean, the green really door, interesting. Yeah, yeah really. And it made sense. They, they it laid did. it out, and it all made sense. It wasn't mm -hmm. too uh, over the top and convoluted. You just, went, yeah. yeah, that makes but sense. But interesting yeah. as well. I mean, you had all yep. the Lovecraftian stuff going on, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I adore Immortal Hulk. Yeah, uh, <laughs> door, <laughs> green door. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's one of those things that uh, it's very hard to find comics that excite me as much as that did. And yeah. oh man, that is so good. But let's talk about some Warhammer, eh? Yeah, let's Woo! let's get after the Warhammer. Let's Andy, Andy, me, Andy, what are you doing? What, what have you been doing? What have you been Recording doing? Nothing at all. Okay. Well, I, I've been. I, I finished one orc from the kill team, and I've been very slowly, just every now and again, just coming in and touching a few other orcs. I've got like eleven yeah. to do or something mm -hmm. like that. It's it's taking. It's taking a bit of time, but um, mm. I'm fairly fairly happy with how they're turning out. I can really honestly lovely, say, actually. hand on heart, Andy, you've leveled the fuck up with that. Yeah, they orcs. look really good. Thank you. Jesus, yeah. they're amazing. Yeah, I, I looked at the um, the Underworlds kill team I did, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, mm -hmm. the Underworlds t uh, team I did. Uh, I, I do think they look a little bit better than those Underworld guys I did. I'll do it side by side when I get them all done. But uh, like, yeah. like I say, it's it's taken a while. It's taken a mm -hmm. bit, of, bit of time to do it. I really like doing the bases. I really like the uh, down and dirty rust as well. If yeah. if you want rust, get down and dirty rust. It's really, really good. <laughs> I'm going to end really up with good. so much dust, dust and grime paints by the end of the the year. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's if you do any rust, it's like the rust paint to get. I would yeah. say, yeah, yeah, it's super good. Go out and have a look at that. You know, yeah. <laughs> Stop painting tyranids in rust. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I was thinking more along the lines of my death guard, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. You Definitely. just dunk them. You just dunk them and you go done. <laughs> done. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Excellent. Excellent. You can get yeah. a, a you can get a moss variation, a light rust. Sorry, yellow mm -hmm. rust, which I don't know what. Right. I didn't get the yellow rust, and you can get the. I can't remember what they call it, but there was an oxidization version as well. So if you mm. want to do copper and do that, it's a uh, yeah. Oh, the nice. range they're they're a little bit expensive, but you can you can see why it's useful. The only recommendations really good, right? to have are shake more than you'd think you'd need to, and maybe even go in with like a stick and stir it. Yeah, uh, and then yeah. make sure the model is warm to the touch, and make sure the bottle that you're using is warm to the touch as well. So you that, get the best effects. That sounds very old school. You had to do that with the old uh, Citadel paints. Did you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If you didn't, they'd separate, and you'd get like sediment on the bottom and water on the top, basically. Ah. <laughs> it's why certain adult toys get used for shaking paints. <laughs> <laughs> Which is one of my favorite things in the world, is people just like shaking paints. This paint shake is amazing. You should really <laughs> get one. <laughs> Oh fucking Jesus! All right, okay. I've just got a nail. F uh, I've got a nail one. Uh, you know that you uh, used to for your nail varnishes and stuff. I didn't yeah, know you yeah, could yeah. get vibrator ones, penal ones. Well, what they used to suggest for like the war, the Citadel paints, was that you put like gravel in the bottom of the paints, oh, and that prevented terrible it. idea. It prevented it from separating. <laughs> you need to probably put those. Uh, Bits of gravel in the oven first to clean them, I would imagine. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's such a weird thing. They were they were so like prone to solidifying or splitting or just yep. otherwise going bad. I guess yeah. this is pre ball bearings, isn't it? Like the oh, idea yeah. that oh, you yeah. just throw in the ball. Oh yeah, bearings. these are the old like you know the old pop top. Yeah, yeah. Oh, from classic. eons ago. <sighs> goblin <sighs> green, basically the mist. Yes, the goblin the green paint. era. Yes, yeah. I always say that the best paint that Games Workshop ever did were the ones with the black top where you had the finger oh, the holes so you could open top. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Like, oh, I don't know. 
they were just oh that's that's yeah. much, if you were you want to see me just collapse in some form of Wagnerian orgasm that's it just put me in a room with them <laughs> yeah I'll just, that I'll just sniff them <laughs> <laughs> oh here's a question for you too because you're pretty good at remembering things what were your favorite paints that don't exist anymore from the citadel oh, range God. apart from obviously goblin green that's like Go the yeah goblin one. green's too too easy isn't yeah. it um evil I, sun's red yeah that was a good one in fact i mean that that defined a whole era didn't it yep. that defined a whole era of uh, games workshop the red era yeah and it was that <laughs> red as well it was the evil sun's red wasn't it everything yep. was bloody red everything was I'm trying to remember what the orange was called that you used to uh, to do the edging. Um, it could have been fiery orange. There was a fire fire. Could have fire Drake. No, it wasn't fire Drake. I would no, have to fire look it Drake up. Was too late on. Um, yeah. this was this was well early. Um, sunburst was it? Sunburst, sunburst orange? Burst. No, sunburst was yellow. Sunburst, sunburst was, was yellow. yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't know. I don't know. My favorite was hawk turqu turquoise. I liked that one. Do you remember that? Uh, Army Painter do a very, very similar, um, quiet you, uh, do a very, very similar one to... Oh, Hawk I know, Turquoise. I've got it. That's yeah, what please. I used to paint my Thousand Suns. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was my favourite. I loved that one. It was it was such a pretty colour. Mm -hmm. I keep meaning to try out these, um, uh, the Foundry ones. Um, before we started the show... I started speaking and I said entirely the wrong information. <laughs> and I think that's going to be the way this is going to go tonight because my brain ain't fucking working. But there's a company out there who did very, very almost pitch perfect Citadel colored matches. Oh, hmm. oh I know um, the guys you're talking about. I can't remember the their name though. I don't know. I don't remember things. Chat, does no. chat know? You can oh, get Goblin Green. Yeah. Oh, can you? Can you get a, like, yeah. a current version of Goblin the bottles, Green? That the bottles are actually pretty similar to those era where you've got the bit of plastic which you have to peel off from around. Oh, the pop-top the, the pop ones. Oh, yeah. God, that, that those, those are the ones back. you're thinking of, right, Gruff? Yeah, definitely. Yep, that's the ones. Yeah, Even the, the one. current oh. company using that are doing that. So you can get the uh, the blood angels red that they had everything yeah. they even had, i think they even do that that flesh shade as well whatever that is <laughs> yes I, yeah god i uh, want to play a little game right now actually while we're waiting for the, ch the catch to uh, the chat to catch up uh, who wants to put money on darren being the one to tell us what the oh, big is? swing and d's already uh, on or it yeah, already i was gonna say or, or big swing and d I'm, I'm putting tenor down on big swing and d <laughs> it's the battle between double d's <laughs> who will win D or Big D <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could google it myself now but I'm excited to see who wins yeah. they were the bane uh, of parents a... everywhere weren't they those pop tops so they would get over everything oh absolutely absolutely everything yeah, were they, and, they were, which were more likely to die faster because I always feel that the ones now no matter what I do there's always a big ring of wasted paint around the bottom. No matter yeah. whatever I do, I have to keep cleaning yeah. it, cleaning it out. That's yeah, like the same use the, the army painter ones. ones. <laughs> yeah, the pr the problem is I just hate. There's so many colors for army paint. I just yeah. hate. I hate them. They're just bad paints. Like they have the. I, so I tried to use uh, fiery orange today uh -huh. on my orcs, and it has this horrible glossy look to it, and it doesn't uh -huh. go on very well. And it was the same for one of their uh, purples as well. It was awful. Awful, yeah. awful, awful. What I find really works for um, a lot of the, the darker colors with Army Painter is to do half and half mix between that mm -hmm. and um, something else. Yeah. Uh, because that way you'll lose that, that weird plasticky shine that it gets. Mm. But mm -hmm. no, what about the I, lighter I, colors? Uh, like the, the orange. Same, yeah. me, same, same again. So if you like do a, a mix with that and um, I don't know, like a, a slightly darker orange or something like that or a, a yellow. Then from you, the same range or from yeah yeah I mean, Dad, i've done it with the same range i've done it with um duck turbo and i've done it with citadel okay what, what else do i have in my giant paint rack i don't know it's if you guys can see the giant paint rack but mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, it is full of paints no. I, will, I, will, I will say that as army paint to do the best seem seem to do the best speed paints mm -hmm. they do the best ones like they're better than okay. contrast because they're cheaper and yeah. they've got more range to them. They're vibrant. Uh, they just seem yeah. to be the best now. Uh, um, okay. Normal paints. Yeah, you know, I'd rather go for Vallejo normal paints if I could. I really well, yeah, like Vallejo. Yeah. There we uh, go. Yeah. Apparently, it's Walkler's Nostalgia '98. Okay. Uh, it says uh, Big Swing and D. 
I think uh, did Cassius say? No, uh, I think it was uh, yeah, it was Big Swing and D. Yeah. And uh, uh, Monk Monk Finn also said Darren. he's called 98, yeah. That's Darren, so uh, Big D got in just there a little faster, I'm afraid. Big ah. D just slipped right in there. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself, George? Uh, oh, you've been I'm, very, very yeah, busy. Really busy, actually. This is the most hobby I've done in a an, uh, an age. It really is. <laughs> Thanks largely to Andy, um, who sent me a ton of Death Guard miniatures. Which, uh, just beautiful. I mean, that as, as I was saying before we came on, that range is incredible. Oh, yeah. It's one of the most complete, most interesting ranges that Games Workshop have done for a long time. Every like, even like the individual troops, every single miniature is a character. Effectively, it's got yeah. the same individuality and detail of a an independent character from another range. You know, it's mm-hmm. utterly beautiful. So I've started them and it was almost like on a whim, you know, I just sat down and started putting, putting them together and modeling bits onto them. So now I've got, you know, I've got Lord Feltheus's cohort done and they're converted <laughs> up. They've got like all of these green stuff worms coming out of them. Cause that's mm. going to be like the theme of my death guard. They've, they're infected with like parasitic worms from the garden of Nurgle. Um, and it's easy to, to do as well. It's lovely. It's, 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 it individualizes them. Yeah. But yeah it makes them e- it, it's easy to, to put together and do um i've got like a plague marine uh squad i've got several characters the lords of contagion going on i've got um the malignant plague caster um a that plague surgeon model it's good oh, it's real yeah. good Oh my god, it's brilliant! Oh, it's simple. I mean, it's really like simple. It's it, there's nothing like that. It's not like say a lot of the Eldari miniatures that are all you know so dynamic and elaborate, but it's just so characterful. It's so beautifully put together. Mm-hmm. I'm very, very into the Death Guard at the moment. I've got to say, I never intended to start out ten <laughs> doing a Death Guard army, but that's definitely what's happening. And I do have Mortarion knocking about somewhere as well who I need to sit down and put together. So yeah, that's happening. I put together the Screamer Killer from the Leviathan box set yesterday, Yay. all in one go, you know, and that, that's an absolute belter. Oh, that's yeah. a belter. That is amazing. How is many more of it wrong? are you going to get in the future? Are you going to get another oh. three? <laughs> oh god yeah absolutely i mean i want that and i want some of the the other carn effects as well i really want a lot of the newer stuff for the tyranids which we'll be talking about later obviously yes <laughs> wow wow it's a good time to be in the hobby it's a good time i um i was looking at the uh the pic the uh, video that you, you sent to the our message uh mm-hmm. see what i mean brain not work i was looking yeah. at the video that you sent to our messenger and um I was looking at it and I went, I know I can see how to green stuff that thing to make it look more like an original Carnifex. Yeah, I, I, it's so, there's so many references on it to the original Carnifex. It so would take no work, no work at all. And that's, nope. I might do that, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I might do that at some point. I know the, the problem is if I do that, I'm going to start a Tyranid army. And, yeah, that's uh, the thing, right? That's the thing. I mean, the I mean the Leviathan box that's really good because it has a little Tyranid army in it anyway. Yep. You know, it's effectively a little functional Tyranid army, and it's a nice base to to expand from. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my God, there's so much out there now. There's so much good stuff that obviously, if you start, you're going to want. Or you're going to want. Yeah. To get. Just wait for the combat patrol. It'll be coming. Yeah, that too. I'll yeah, probably no. have one of the the new models, or I'll have the Carn effects from the mm-hmm. current box. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll have something probably new and big in there. Maybe I'll have some of the new Hormaguns, which again we'll talk about. Yes, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, from the Death Guard, the one that really impressed me was Typhus. Yeah. Really impressed by that. As we were talking about before we came on, the, the official photography from Games Workshop for that miniature does not do it justice no. at all. It no. really doesn't. I don't know what it is. I mean, Andy, you said it might be the paint scheme, and I think that might mm. be it, you know? Or yeah. it just might be the angle that they've taken it from. It just, for some reason, it doesn't pop. There's something about it that doesn't work. But when you get the damn thing in hand, you realize that it's incredible. I usually <laughs> find the Death Guard look, at least in my eyes, look better white and then yeah. dirty down. Yeah, like the green agreed. green and gold, it, it, it's it's fine. But it's not a poppy color. It doesn't really no. grab your attention aggressively like a, I, a, a I like dirty, it. dirty white. 
I'm totally with you on that. I like the dirty down white. I think yeah. that works really well. Where it's it maybe just turning green, like it's got a tint to it, but it's mm. not complete. You know, it's not there yet. It's not yeah, like vibrant yeah. green. It's also good for like emphasizing rust because you can have yes. the rust drips down on the white, and this really pops exactly. a lot more. If, it, yeah. if rust on green, yeah, it's it's it's, it's not as poppy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. The problem is with Death Guard green is that it melds with like the browns and. Mm, flesh yeah. colors and stuff so as a result you, you kind of lose a lot if yeah. it was a either a much darker green or a much lighter green you could get a bit more contrast in there and that would work really nicely i also think part of the problem is because of the you know because of the uh, the ethos of the, uh, the 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 heavy metal team they've got to paint them in slightly more cleanly than they're made yeah. for and that's just the way it is right that's just the way it's always going to be when it comes to the official miniatures they're never going to go too far down those experimental paint schemes Mm -hmm. but the death guard miniatures are tailor-made to be dirty yeah they they always look better when they've got these really dirty experimental paint schemes where you've dry brushed and you've stippled and you've you know you've lathered them in all sorts of washes and whatnot that's when they work best when the miniatures th- themselves are kind of dirty, you know? How do you think this would look in, like, fluorescent, like, pink? And then you kind of do some interesting dirty down colors. Could could Death Guard work with, like, fluorescent pink and fluorescent dark blue <laughs> kind of colors? I think they could work with... I, I mean, uh, fluorescence I don't think works for the Death Guard. Thousand Suns, you could get away with it, but I just don't think it'd work for the The Death reason Guard. I say fluorescent is because you could have some really interesting fleshy pink, very mm-hmm. vibrant pink fleshy stuff, like popping boils and stuff. Yeah, like the, I suppose you could The get goo away with coming that. out of the Death Guard could be the the uh, really bright colors. Like yeah, when you pop I mean, a zit. that's actually how a lot of the, uh, the Death Guard armies online that people have done actually do it. Like the, the spot colors tend to be like a vibrant yellow from like luminous pus or something like that. Mm. And that works really well. That actually works really well, especially if you've got a slightly muted down uh, scheme for the mo- for the actual armor or flesh that works very very well um but i don't know th- there's something about the official paint schemes they've used in like the the the, the, the codices and whatnot that doesn't do those miniatures justice i don't know why why did kugath never come on a giant toilet <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. poor old kugath as well I-, I mean like he's always been in the background but they've never actually done like a proper miniature for him no. That's what I like. No. All I want is a big, like, unclean one just on a massive giant toilet. Yeah, mm-hmm. would make sense. Would make sense. A load, a load mean, of nerglings carrying it, you know, on the You backs. could definitely model, you know, Epidemius, the tally man. You could definitely convert him so he's on a toilet. It would work. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. It would definitely work. Uh, myself, I've, um, I'm just going to pull this down here. So when we went to Warhammer Fest, me and Darren took part in the builder challenge right i don't know how well you're going to be able to see this and i made this diorama out of bits of pipe and all these other bits and bobs right now what i've just done is i've just worked on a few bits and i have just added lighting to it (laughs) so it's now you really can't oh wow so there's uh now lighting happening yeah that's a through it you need to um, add in the sound box now. <laughs> well, that what I looks need to, great. What I need to do is... Uh, just turn this back off. I need to do is fix the bass. Cause, well, ah! no, oh, right. no. It's like the, uh, the little... Oh, heri- no! The little heretic fell off, but that's okay. That's uh, brilliant. It ah! looks so good. Let's do it again. There we go. Right. Okay. And the, oh, and oh, he's gone again. That's right. And <laughs> the next thing I intend to do is... Add lighting to this thing, which is the other diorama I made at Warhammer Fest, yeah. which is the Avatar of Sigma smashing through a wall to stop a thief. Oh, so good. So I want to get some lighting on that thing next. Um, that was brilliant. Um, honestly, I'm, I, I love doing that. That was yeah, the best thing for awesome. me about Warhammer Fest was just sitting there and making deals with people to get bits. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound shady. <laughs> not at all no i've got i've got a plan for next year to uh, to have stuff in my bag that i can just start like saying to people hey i see that you need some scissors uh it'll, <laughs> it'll cost you <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I, they've been really fun getting back into and, uh, and finishing them off 
Um, and of course, the other thing I've been working on is I have begun work on my Age of Sigma scaled uh, Marauder miniatures based yes. tree man. Awesome. So that is a, a skeleton made of cocktail sticks uh, <laughs> held together with super glue and cellar tape wrapped with garden wire to make the body. <laughs> So I can't do any more with that until I get paid so I can get some uh, uh, Millie Put and stuff. Is that going to be the beginning of a Sylvaneth army, Adam? Uh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to go for like aquarium plants to like add the leaves to it and whatnot? That'd be well, fun. Wow. I keep having this idea of a Sylvaneth army that's been cursed by the bad moon. Mm -hmm. So, like, really distorted, really fungal. I was going to say um, fungal, yeah. That'd yeah. Be good fun. But also, like, you could put, like, uh, ghoul arms on them and stuff mm. like that to make it look like the wood's turning into, like, myclonic flesh and stuff. Yeah. And you could do all sorts of really interesting things with it. And I keep thinking about it. It's like, oh, God, there's so many ideas. And I, mm -hmm. I'm very poor. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, of course, Darren thinks that uh, this tree man is actually the beginning of me making a Wicker Man-style helmet to fill with bees. So, <laughs> Oh, man, can you imagine having bees just flying around? Oh, no, shut up. Shut up. Right, should we talk about some news? Yeah, before yeah I start talk yes, there's a lot going on, isn't there? Before I start talking about all the different ideas I have, shall we begin with the previews, then? Well, I yeah. hope I've got these in the right order. <laughs> 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 Me too. So, um, the Warhammer preview, A Shadow Des Descends on Ogram. I want to read this to you because this is such a wonderful piece of prose. As the Grindilus Tendril uncoiled across the Formidire system, its ravenous swarms descended upon the hive world of Ogrim. The planet's skies darkened with spore storms, and a billion strong swarms of winged biohorrors, and it seemed Ogrim was surely doomed. Yet the Imperial defenders stood firm, for every tide of tyranids that overran artillery emplacements or boiled through breaches' imperial fortifications, another was crushed beneath the treads and guns of masked tank formations, strafed to ruin by relentless wings of gunships, or cut to pieces by coordinated space marine strikes. Hope was kindled from embers to a roaring fire amongst the bloody defenders as the soul blade fleets returned from the furthest reaches of the Bassator subsector to reinforce the Formula I system. Fresh hosts of humanity's most potent warriors streak down through the atmosphere in heavy landers and drop pods to join the fray. From Ogrim's sprawling nightmare hives to its subterranean engine spires, from the city sized spaceport of Saint Stair to the infested nightmare of its southern polar chem swamps, warriors of the Imperium turned back the Xenos flood with guns blazing. Did they? Did they? <laughs> because that prose gives you the idea the Imperium won, and guess what? They didn't. They, they got it. <laughs> mm, I, got it. I mean this is great isn't it this is it's real isn't it lovely like the beginning of 10th ed starts with a xenos victory and it's against like the space marines and whatnot no so, the ultramarines yeah this is great this is wonderful and i like the way they've done this so because the tyranids won they're getting all their new previews and miniatures first right and it looks like their codex first as well did That's you a see lovely the, way of doing it. That's a did lovely you see way the meme image it. of all of the enemy forces standing around a TV going, oh my god, they <laughs> did it. They did it, yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like shocked. I like I mean, I like the fact that they used this this battle to determine like who got their who gets their codex first, who like gets the big release first. I think mm. that's brilliant. I think that's absolutely brilliant. And it's lovely. I mean, this is basically unprecedented. It's lovely to see that first big release being a Xenos army. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's it's great just seeing the Imperium have the ship pushed in. Yes, it's great. It's great. <laughs> I'm very pleased. <laughs> Makes me so very happy. Um, so yeah, the uh, the battle for Ogram ended up being a well, I want to say a massive victory for the Tyranids, but as they were fighting the Ultramarines, I'm going to say 
it was a massive victory for the oh, Tyranny. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd say this is a massive victory because it wasn't like by one percent. It was it was by a few percent. Yeah, yeah, it, it's good. reasonable, isn't it? It's and they, they it's theoretical a, Space Marine players that GW keeps pushing heavily for. Mm -hmm. So and they, in theory, should be the biggest amount to see the Tyranids still pull out the victories. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. it's pretty cool. I've got to say, I'm massively pleased. I'm massively pleased. Not Necron, so I can't be so pleased. But I am, you know, <laughs> push, like, like Russ said, pushing the shit into the Ultramarines is never a bad thing. Yeah, and consider the, the plot armor you know, the kind Ultramarines of have. You know. Imagine, imagine they changed it so oh, it wasn't the Ultramarines, they were fighting the Crimson Fists or something <laughs> like that. The, the Lamenters, they were fighting the Lamenters, not the Ultramarines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. you mean like the original 13th Black Crusade, yeah, like just <laughs> they retconned it completely. It wasn't the Ultramarines. No, they didn't lose. The Ultramarines don't lose. Don't worry about that. It was another one chapter instead. Yeah. <laughs> but this is cool. I hope they keep the mem the momentum up, like the narrative momentum. I really want to see like the Imperium on the back foot against the Tyranids throughout Tenth now. Well, what I'm what I've read is that this means that they are kind of in a direct line for terror. Yeah, yeah. So honestly, unless Games Workshop pull out some real cheeky shit. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of concerned where this is going. Well, Ab I mean, one of the things they're definitely going to do, Abaddon's not going to be pleased with that. Because no. Terra belongs to him, right? Mm -hmm. Can he do so much you about it? Because if he can't get there fast enough... Mm -hmm. But he's he's de you're definitely going to get the Chaos Force. He's like making a beeline for Le for Leviathan at this point. They, they're they going to want to <laughs> try and get in their way, you know? Stop them. Can you imagine that every sort of two months or so, they hold another one of these, and it's mm -hmm. the Tyranids versus another thing. So next one's Tyranids versus Chaos. I'd be, I'd be uh, up for that. Right, Tyranids devour Chaos. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tyranids who versus Necrons. <laughs> who doesn't get any love? What's the faction that doesn't get any love? Because that faction should be the one that wins, because then yeah, it, it would like force good. GW to give them a bit of like, you know, <laughs> a, a little handy bit of job. A leg up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, maybe we should do something was... for them. Yeah, I mean, in ninth it was kind orcs? of the Necrons, weren't it? Maybe they, they maybe were... it'd be nice for the Orcs to win. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun, wouldn't it? Like, yeah, to have, to have the Orcs coming back as like one of the big antagonists in the setting, that'd be yeah. fun. Yeah, it's like the big war. Maybe not the big war, but it's like <laughs> lots of little wars pop up. So it's like a big war yeah. across the space sector. Right. This... Elder, so they can finally get plastic warp spiders and Phoenix Lords. Yes, <laughs> yes, that, yeah. 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 That's, I mean, that, that's how the chai changes. What new warp spiders pop in just at the last second? At the last like second, that. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've been Why? waiting for this day. Why you been waiting? <laughs> ah, <laughs> Mysterious reasons. Elder <laughs> reasons. I I want to see it. So it's like you know, chaos gets munched. Uh, the necrons yes. get smashed. Uh -huh. um, the dark elder get crushed, and then <laughs> it's. The uh, the reason that the orcs win is because they run into the Tyranids on the way to go and kick the shit out of Angron. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the Tyranids aren't even the reason that they're there. It's just that they're aiming for Angron. Like, <laughs> what are you doing, my friend Yarrick? <laughs> the only other thing I'd like to win is uh, Space Cyber Monkeys. Oh, the, rise, the, the Rise yeah. of Ape. <laughs> rise of the space ape yeah rise of the space ape it is our time oog 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 <laughs> they see uh, tyranids yeah. as just space bananas to peel I mean, and eat do you think they'll continue this format or do you think that this is just for the beginning of 10th do you think like down the line what they'll do is you'll have another narrative event when there are another two codices to be released and they'll they'll like have a fight between them to see which one comes my fear would be that they cook the books at some point yeah i'd like them to keep going but my fear mm -hmm. i i'm shocked that the tyranids won yeah but i i'd always be a, uh concerned that gw at some point will be like and they lose yeah. so the tyranids yeah. lose they have to because they'll have to lose but mm -hmm. yeah. you know mm -hmm. to what extent and when yeah, yeah, well, for, just to keep the stability of the setting. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, of course. But I mean, like, when it comes to like the next set of codices, like the next two, do you think they'll have a narrative event for those two armies? And then I hope so. That would I'd be like fun, that. wouldn't it? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I really hope so because that is a lovely dynamic way of releasing the armies. It's much more interesting. It's much more engaging. You know, I'd love to see that. Do you think I'd... they can do this Tyranid push for the entire run of 10th, though? I don't think it would last mm. that long. I think they could probably no. do it to the halfway point of 10th, yeah. however long, or, or a year. Maybe they could do it for an entire yeah. year 
and then yeah. they'd have to like switch it up and do something else. Yes, absolutely. I mean, what they what I'm thinking is if they introduce like a a new narrative for each for like two factions down the line, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and that determines a little sort of sub narrative within the universe that feeds into a bigger narrative. That would be fun. Absolutely love them to do that, but that would get a bit weird at some point. Yeah. So you'd have like, why the hell are the Drakari and the orcs having mm-hmm. a pagger? You know, yeah, yeah, something like that. Oh, they'd they'd have to plan it out so that it makes narrative sense. Yeah. So, oh yeah. I mean, the Drakari, the the obvious one would be the Eldari. You know, yeah. to pair with them. Um, but then you've got the problem of you're releasing two Eldar books yes, back, yeah. back and that's, that would get a bit weird. It is problematic, isn't it? It yeah. is problematic. Um, doable, but, but problematic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd, I very much would like to see like the Tyranids hitting a craft world at this point so we get like that mm. wonderful uh, feeling again of the... Uh, the um, like the gene stealers running through the the wraithbone forest. Ah, uh, so like 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 a, a repeat mm. of Eandon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because what I mean, if you I don't know if, how many guys remember this. Uh, so going back in the days of my youth, White Dwarf actually had a game which was the Tyranids attacking. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Eandon oh, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, it, it was Eandon because that that became the basis for the background of Eandon. You know why yeah. they're ghost warriors now? It's yeah. because the Tyranids ate a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> do Eldar's souls still go to Slanesh after a Tyranid eats them mm, oh that's a good question that's an interesting uh, metaphysical question yeah mm. I don't know mm. I wish there was somebody we could ask <laughs> yeah <laughs> curse you maybe, fictional setting maybe a soul is still able to tra- travel to the warp and maybe it takes yeah. a little bit longer for it to get there has to go through the uh, intestinal tract of the tyranny. Yeah. <laughs> it gets pooped out. Yeah. <laughs> Big Swing and D says... Slan would still want it, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Swing and D says, Elandon 2, Rathbone Boogaloo. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, honestly, I'm, I'm amazed the Tyranids won, considering yeah. the amount of plot Jeez. armor that, that the uh, Imperial... Um, the ultramarines have um, yeah. once again i apologize my brain ain't working tonight and it's just the fact that they are like now the poster boys for 10th right yeah the tyranids are now the first army for 10th they're going to have their codex first they're going to have they've had the this fuck saw that coming right I, uh, pfft, um it, uh, it's a shock I, i'm not surprised they're getting the codex first just because they got the models from the mm. leviathan box set that makes sense yeah. but i'm still surprised that they they won yeah, that's what surprises yeah. me. I'm not surprised that the book's coming out when it is because they, they want to get the. It's it's like with the Necrons, the the Indomitus, the the, the Necrons were the first ones to get their codex, so mm-hmm. you know, it just makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be intrigued to see what the the codexes for this edition look like. Yeah, that that's one of the big things, right? That mm. that that's going to be one of the big questions that people are asking on the basis of this. What what's the format? Um, there's some clues knocking about. Like they talked about, um, I think it's in the Lictor entry with all those beautiful new miniatures. Um, that there's oh. going to be a detachment that lets you take a basically a Lictor army, right? Oh. What? <laughs> it's like what? It's Honestly, bonkers. I saw that, and the words that escaped my mouth would was literally the fuck. Yeah, it's bonkers. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Excited. I love it. Yeah, really exciting, that is. You're drinking oil there. Uh, no, that is a blackcurrant and orange juice mix. Oh, it just looked like you had a jug of oil. <laughs> uh, yeah, got, got to keep myself lubed. <laughs> Good sticky oil. I often get very thirsty through uh, recording these, so I've uh, <laughs> I got myself one of these giant bottles and just fill that with like diluted juice hmm. keeps keeps me going it does mean that i'm fairly sure that the halfway mark of this i'm gonna need a piss like nothing else well that's why you have another jug next to you <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same jug i like to recycle uh should we talk about the miniatures yeah well, you're gonna talk about water world it. again let's get into it <laughs> yeah, well, there's a few things in the world i enjoy more than kevin costner pissing into a bottle to drink <sighs> yeah. it. Talk, talk about a sexual fantasy right there. <laughs> yeah. It was one of the weirdest scenes in that uh, Snyder Superman, but uh, yeah, it's it. 
Christ. <laughs> uh, right then, so the original Xenos threat gets a facelift, and Big the Gene style, Steelers right? have had a mm, glow up. Wow. Um, I mean, like, these are really interesting. It's subtle, but significant, yeah. right? Absolutely. It's it's the, all to do with the proportions, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the arms are longer, the limbs are longer, yeah. the hands are bigger. The heads it, are slightly more sort of, like, bulbous. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they're they really, really cool looking. Oh, oh they look great. Did you God. wonder what E.T. looked like when he was young and fertile? <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. I, uh, many, many years ago, I considered the idea of a black and blue Tyranid army. Mm -hmm. um, where the shells would be black with like blue highlights yeah, and yeah. then it would be like really dark skin and I'm looking at these now and I'm just imagining the yellow eyes poking out from that mm -hmm. Ooh. they're lovely miniatures I mean <laughs> what can you say the Gene Steelers are the the archetype of the Tyranids aren't they you know they yeah. were kind of the first Tyranids really in any mm, meaningful yeah. sense and they've they've obviously acknowledged that and thought, well, they need to be iconic miniatures, mm -hmm. and that's what they've done. They're definitely the most dynamic gene stealers. They're all like clambering over stuff and leaping and mm -hmm. whatnot. They're just beautiful, beautiful. My two favourite are the bottom uh, bottom left. I want a hug, <laughs> and the one standing next to him that's going there, there. I know it's sad. <laughs> I love the uh, the Imgal Gene Stealer reference with the face, the, the yeah. tendrils. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's going to piss me off because I know you're only going to get one of them per box, aren't you? Is it only one oh, per no. box? Can you not do a whole... Oh, no. uh... I, I, I'm going to guess it's one per box. That's oh, a shame. No. I'd like to do I a think, whole... I think they might put a few in there, maybe. Wouldn't Unless it's great. a special character. Like, maybe yeah. it's a special weapon like or, some, or something. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a metamorph, isn't it? It's... Um... The, it, it's well actually no i'm saying that because that's what it has been it used to be yeah it yeah. used to be it used to give them some upgrade i can't remember quite what um eat, eat your brains basically yes basically that. they could eat the the brains of their uh, victims and gain knowledge and information mm -hmm. um there's also the acid more one which is a nice classic biomorph there yeah. that's cool is that that's the one cool. with the weird tongue it's the, it is the one with the weird tongue and the sort of like swollen lymph nodes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> the one that's got tonsillitis, basically. Yeah, I want to squeeze those bits on the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> but I, my I god, do. they're so good. They look a bit bulkier as well, don't they? These guys. Is it me they or do. do they look a bit? I don't know. They, 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 they've got more mass to them. Yeah. Absolutely. Which makes sense. So, Imagine it's actually, quite hard to pose these guys because you know generally when I when I think of Gene Steelers I think of the one pose you got from Space Hulk yeah. in my mind unless they're climbing on something mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know how I'd pose them because they're always running at you they're it's always running them. yeah their hands are going to be in front of you in front of them waving and there's just going to be slight variations of that but I think they're going to do a pretty good job making yeah. these as uh, dynamic as possible as they can I... possibly be yeah. I have been corrected, as I think will be a uh, an ongoing thing that will happen in this <laughs> episode. Um, yeah, apparently you get enough for the entire box. Oh, hey. that's brilliant. So you can do an entire squad of Imgar gene stealers. Well, shit. That's, that's lovely. That, that that makes that a, a must. That's matter. what I'll be doing. Yeah. That's definitely what I'll be doing because they, are you going to use so the other heads and make little spider bodies for them for, from like the thing? <laughs> So they could be I'll like you could make them into the rippers, right? Yeah, yeah that'd exactly. Be great. Yeah. That'd be great. That's a lovely yeah. idea. Maybe That's add exactly wings to a few of them. Yeah. Have little gene stealer heads with wings yeah, on. That's, That's a horrifying. Idea. I like the spider head. I love that idea. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. I have got like four different wings from the um the ghoul kits. Yeah. Um, ah. So they're really big wings on the tiny head, and that would just look amazing. <laughs> Wouldn't that look great on little poles? Yeah, so they're yeah. flying. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you darren and big swing and d for uh, correcting me on that and uh, i look forward to see what else i get corrected on tonight i'm dead pleased about that i mean it, it looks like it's just going to be a really brilliant kit right yeah, yeah. The, the, it's it's not really a complaint but it's more like a uh, i understand is mm. i think this is one of the worst color schemes i've ever seen on the tyranids and it's oh, the, the standard the color scheme. The it's, shit. Scheme. it's a shit color scheme it's, it's very washed out, yeah. It's boring. 
Like I've seen like someone did a Carnifex, uh, the new Carnifex in like black and yellow, like a giant mm. wasp bee thing, and that yeah. looks so good. Like there's so many interesting what Behemoth, I think Behemoth for me from the standard color schemes mm-hmm. is a is a lot more striking. Mm-hmm. What, what about Kraken? Blue. Which one's Kraken? What color's Kraken? Uh, I was gonna say Kraken's red and blue, but it's not, is it? I'm no, really Behemoth. doing I'm doing <laughs> fucking brilliant tonight. <laughs> Take more of your oil, Gruff. <laughs> oil, 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 yes. oil. Yes, Dad. <laughs> I'll, dr- I'll drink the oil and see if it makes me brain work. I like the one further down the page that's in the classic Jean Steeler colours. Yeah, the that one's quite good. Blue, purple. It actually blue, has it, that. That, it has a little tentacle face. Well, also yeah. fuck the fuck the painter who um, uh, lined <laughs> uh, all of those tentacles individually. Oh my fuck god. that guy. Yeah. Oh girl. my god, that is insane, isn't it? Fuck that person as well who did a little shine on the tiny eye. So it's not just a <laughs> yellow eye, but it's got a little <laughs> tiny reflection. <laughs> fuck that person. <laughs> I hate you. If you listen to the show, I personally hate you. I don't actually hate you, but I hate how skillful you are. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Yeah, I'm I am honestly I'm blown away by how yeah, good these guys they're are. They're so good. They're I'm, so good. Honestly, the fact that there's new gene stealers and they look this good, and that isn't the thing that I love the most from this preview. Right, man. Yeah. Blows my mm-hmm. mind. Um mm-hmm. uh, right, space move when next? <laughs> We've got new Dean Steelers. We've got new Terminators. New Space Hulk. When? Yeah, oh, yeah, about yeah. Time. That's a fair point. Yeah, it's about there. time. It's yeah. there, isn't it? You know. Yeah. It's the theme of Ten Third Space Marines versus Tyranids. Come on. Everybody fucking loves Space Hulk. It's probably their best game system. Yeah. You can just buy a box of it and it's done. Yeah. That was a yeah, fucking yeah. hard game. <laughs> <laughs> it's still one of the oh, best yeah. ones. If you play the Space Marines, board oh, yeah. possible. It's a suicide <laughs> mission. <laughs> uh, I remember. Do you guys remember when White Dwarf used to do like different things for Space Crusade? Uh, Space Crusade for Space Hulk. Yeah, and you'd have like Imperial Guardsmen in there, and it was yeah. a little editor's note that was just basically, "This will not <laughs> allow you to win." No. Uh, you may want to work different ways with your opponent to make this a bit more fair. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I, remember, I remember doing it with Grey Knights as well, and the Grey Knights just kept trouncing the uh, the Gene Sealers. Well, they would. I mean, Grey yeah, Knights, yeah. like, you know, so elite, it's ridiculous. I guess they'd take away some of the magic. No, would they take away some of the psychic powers? That would, that would sort of defeat. The point yeah. of the Grey Knights. Yeah, yeah. Be, that's know, the thing. What, yeah. How would you be able to do like f- justify that fluff wise? Mm. Well, I suppose you, you do you... with the shadow in the warp, you know, dampening the, 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 the their connection to the warp. I suppose you could do it that way. Yeah, but the gene stealers, gene stealers don't have a shadow in the warp. No, that's true. They're not quite what? the same, are they? No, not that's even true. the not even the big one, the brood lord, patriarch. The blue, the brood lord might. Yes, the brood lord I... might. I Speaking the of, there is not there is not a new Broodlord, is there, to go with the new genes? I, I, re- I really hope for a big of... fatty Petria. Yeah, I think That'd the current nice. Broodlord's good enough, but I, it I, is I, cool. we're, we're not we we didn't get Man- Manius Calgar sitting on a toilet. We're not going to get fat no, Patriarch. No, right. no. They, they, uh, you could probably make one. You could make yeah. one out of it. There are a few fat boys out there. You could give mm-hmm. it a go with. I think that'd be yeah. a good project for uh, either of you two, to be fair. Yeah, it would actually, that'd be good fun. You can have that. a fat off. You, if you're both getting <laughs> gene stealers, you can have a fat off, and who's who's the best fatty? Yeah, who I, I kind of like the idea of making this into a competition between yeah. all three of us. Yeah. All three yeah. of us by, oh, you're joining in as well now. You, I don't you've, want Tyranids. <laughs> yeah, you, you threw down the gauntlet, you're getting involved. <laughs> um, <laughs> all three of us have to buy a... Uh, a broodlord on the same day, and then we have to. We've got like two weeks to make it into a fatty patriarch. <laughs> oh, you, you could no, you could just make it out of anything uh, within it within the reasonable scale of a patriarch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, not yeah. like of uh, the great demon. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would be a very big patriarch. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine the uh, broodlord's be head? Big, it, you know? <laughs> be a bit much. This is like bloodthirsty with a broodlord's tiny head on it. Yeah. That would be amazing. Well, yeah, you still I'm, have big wings, tiny head. Yes, I'm, th- I'm thinking of um, the the, patri- uh, the patriarch's head on a uh, great and clean one, and I'm reminded of the movie Slither, where the lady explodes. <laughs> <laughs> if you remember that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a pretty good film. Michael yeah. Rucker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on, then we're going to get yeah. some more swarms, and this is the uh, 
The Termagants and Hormagants. Yeah, the baseline little guys. Yeah. And they're lovely. You know what? The Hormagants have never been good. They've never had good miniatures. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. These are fantastic. I will fight you on those words. The original oh, metal. They were uh, shite. Oh, but they're, they're so stupid and lovely. They were shite. And you could oh. never put them together properly. They were like, they were leaping. They were supposed to be like leaping up. And they were never sat right on the bases. They no. would fall over. No, the original over. termagants when they were um, hunter killers. Oh, I'm the talking... termagants, right? Yeah, right. those metal termagants when they were hunter killers, and they oh, were the, just the termagants. They... Yeah, they, they've had good miniatures all the way through, but the hormigons have always been shite. Yeah, I'd agree there. The <laughs> those freaking arms on the metal ones that would just yes. never stay in. Oh. And not only that, because the arms were up, they would overweigh. The, yep. the miniature it would fall over. <laughs> you had to stick pennies or something to the bottom yep. of the base to keep it to keep it up. I remember a guy having, I think it was twenty pence pieces glued to the bottom, yeah. and, he, and it ended up being he had like forty quid just <laughs> moving around the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> or something new, like Brilliant. Ri- ridiculous when you counted up how many twenty pence pieces he was having to use to keep these things. <laughs> I really like what they've done with these, where they've they've clearly made them like evolutions of the termagant, but they've done a lot to distinguish them. So they're slightly longer yep. bodied, they've got longer tails, they've got longer like lower lower limbs and whatnot. I like mm. that. I think that's really cute. They're almost like Velociraptors from they, Jurassic Park in a way. Yes, I think yeah. I I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Andy. That's what they've looked at. Mm. They've looked at like like dinosaur art and whatnot, and that's what they've gone for with these. Yeah. The way they're moving and everything, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's it's very very redolent of like Jurassic Park Velociraptors. So uh, somebody's mission then is to get these and then start sticking skinks on the back and using them as cold one riders. No, oh, that'd be fun. That'd be Actually, cool. uh, th- these will be like the same size as the skinks, won't they? They were. Yeah, these are like termagant size. They're tiny. Yeah. They're, they're little little boys. These ones. So, 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 that'd be so, pretty so, you, so what you're saying is <laughs> you should use Saurus warriors instead of skinks. So, <laughs> so, so Saurus warriors are just running with a dinosaur between the legs. <laughs> Only if you then uh, green sculpt the eyes to look really sad and tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. They're just really cool little miniatures, aren't they? They're really yeah. dynamic. They're all individual. They they look all look like they're moving. They're just great. Lovely Why did they come things. with what, seemingly one set of ripper? The ripper heads. swarms. I would yeah. assume that there there's a, like a, a squad upgrade or something, almost like they're no. a weapon or something. No, no, it, it's actually better than that. Every troop unit comes mm. with a ripper swarm. Oh, yeah. right. So you basically, if you buy three units of whatever, yeah. you end up with three Ripper Swarms. Oh, that's cool. That's which really is, nice. Yeah, you know, obviously Ripper Swarms aren't game changers in any way, shape, no, or form. No, no. But you're basically getting a free you, unit. It's, it's nice to have, isn't it? That's cool. It's great. This is the type of shit they should have been doing yeah. years ago. I must admit, I've got a real soft spot for the term again. Do you remember when they released the metal ones for Second Ed? Yep, the, with the I little metal harpoons. Yes, I loved yeah. them. And these guys are the, easily the best they've ever been. I mean, they, they just are. <laughs> they're, they're just brilliant. <laughs> they're a little bit bigger than they used to be, which is nice. You know, they're mm-hmm. not quite as titchy. And the bio weapons are fabulous. Yeah. Um, I adore how they've really gone into the idea of all the weapons being parasites. And yes. Parasitical I love that. in nature. It, um, oh, oh, symbiote, oh, yeah, I mean, anything that goes into, like, insectoid symbiosis is yeah. going to automatically have my attention, because it's something I find truly disgusting, but infinitely fascinating. Yeah, I love that. It's something that's always been fascinating about the Tyranids, the fact that their weapons are also so alien, and mm-hmm. the way they're integrated are so alien. I always love the description in the uh, in the codices that sometimes the bio-weapons are actually what's in charge. The yep. symbiote overrides the uh, the intelligence uh, of its carrier. I yep. think that's brilliant. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I remember there's a I remember it was in a codex or in a white dwarf, but a uh, like a little short, little paragraph story of a um, tyranid. I think it was a termagant having a head wound, mm-hmm. but the symbiote was the moving all the body parts around. <laughs> yeah. And it's like mm, mm, that's love brilliant. It. Love it. It looks like there's a lot more variety now too. I mean, mm. they've reintroduced the one you were talking about, Adam, the spike rifle. Yep. They've reintroduced it, which is lovely. Um. 
so so happy because it went away didn't it they actually got rid of the spike rifle for quite a while but it's back again that's really cool nice what to see. i'm really happy about is if you look at the flesh borer guns right mm -hmm. they are not one-to-one -one, but they are very reminiscent of the original tyranid guns yeah there's a lot there that ties them into that original plastic Tyranid. That seems um, to be like something they've done with this re-release. They've mm. updated them. They've made them more alien looking, but they've also made like paid homage to what's gone before. Yeah. Which is oh, lovely. Peter. I think... I think they are, you know. So I've just been looking at the two different Ripper Swarms, and they're from different angles, so it's a difficult one to work out mm -hmm. but i think you get different rippers with each one. Oh, like different subtly different models yeah, yeah. that's cute I, I assumed it was just gonna be like you got the same ones in each one to save yeah time that's, and money that's but what from i the assume. looks of it they are ever so slightly different there yeah they are they are ever so slightly different holy shit that's, that's cute cool. that's like really that. cool that's very cool indeed i like yeah. that Oh, I don't want to do a tuned army, guys. Yeah, I really not. don't, but but I do. <laughs> you kind of do, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I really. Because like every is only gruff. Almost oh, everybody yeah. wants to at the moment. I think. Oh yeah, I, I would go right back to uh, 1989, and I'd be using yeah. those colours. <laughs> Bulbous, bright colours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, should we move on to the lictors because oh my favorites we're All gonna be here a while my favorites these these guys I, I, you know since second ed do you remember the the second ed miniature the big metal one the yep. the the one that was basically like the hug monster <laughs> it had like the flesh hooks coming out of its chest and it was rearing back and it was impossible to put together because it was all lead oh uh so Darren over on the uh, the Twitch uh, mm -hmm. chat, he's just pointed out that come the next forty k part works, mm -hmm. you'll be getting the the Tyranids and stuff because that's the way that these part works have been working. They've always right. used the uh, the starter boxes as uh, a way of doing yeah. stuff out. Right, right. I, I'm so, just gonna wait for that. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for that. That that works for me. That this is the hatchet stuff, it, you mean? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. That'll work for me. Mm -hmm. I can wait for that. Problem is, you'll need to have a, a hatchet sign up, uh, or I get a Forbidden Planet sign up, which would be mm -hmm. a bit cheaper. Oh yeah, or... close enough to Forbidden Planet to just go in and pick up the ones you actually no, want. No, uh, the way it works is that um, if it's one item, it's two quid delivery. If it's three items, it's uh, no two items, it's one quid. Two items, three quid, and it gets up to five quid, and five quid's the maximum delivery. They don't, you don't charge more than five quid. So if I just have like. 20 issues arrive from Forbidden Planet at the same time, it'll save me a bit of money. <laughs> Darren says Hatchet aren't that bad. No, 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 they're not They're not bad. It's just whenever I've signed up, it's been mostly stuff I don't want. And uh, only one yeah, thing yeah, yeah, I would yeah. want, which is why I have a load of Death Guard. And there wasn't enough, like, uh, Necron stuff. And you, uh, some, sometimes the deals are good, sometimes they're not. It depends on the issue. Or I go into WH Smiths and ask them to uh, keep them behind for us. Yeah. I, I'm not close enough to one. It would be too much of a drive for me to go to Metro <laughs> Centre. Uh, I walk past the Smiths on the way to work every year. Uh, oh, that's easy for you. So, yeah, yeah. No, no worries. I think that's what I shall do. I'm going to wait for whatever the new 40k thing is going to be, and that's how I'm going to get some Tyranids. Mm. Speaking of things which I want <laughs> desperately, yeah. my... Right, so... The lictors, they're just stunning, aren't they? I mean, as, as I said, this is my favorite Tyranid monster. The lictor always has mm -hmm. been. There was a bit of narrative in an old white dwarf. This was before, this may have been actually before they were even released for Second Ed. It was back in the, when they released one of the versions of Epic and there was yep. a, a uh, battle report in mm -hmm. The White Dwarf, and it was between the, the Epic Tyranids and the Epic Imperium. Yep. And there was a little narrative piece with a little bit of Adrian Smith artwork that pictured a Lictor, and it was about a Lictor stalking a Commissar, and I've always loved them ever since then. That It was my favourite miniature for the second Ed Tyranids, that impossible mm -hmm. one that you could never keep together because it was <laughs> it just fell apart. Um, and they've always been brilliant. I mean, but these, they they've not only have they expanded like the range there's like there's a different species of lictors now yep. which is fantastic but every single one of these miniatures is astounding yeah. so which do you prefer guys out of the two that we have here standy up lictor or 
fucking honk lictor. I like the one that's crouching. Of the normal yeah. lictors, I like the one that's sort of crouching over the one in the behemoth colours. Yeah. I think it's I think the colours that sing to me as well. It's Oh, oh he's my. beautiful. He's absolutely yeah. beautiful. And if you look at that, Adam, you know that piece of artwork I was talking about? Yeah. It's so clear that this miniature set was based on that, right? Absolutely. It's the same um, pose and everything. It's yeah. got all the details of it. It's even got like that, that crown around the head that's actually yeah. from that artwork. Yep. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Someone somewhere went back and they looked at a lot of the, the Wayne England artwork mm -hmm. that uh, he did for Second Dead yeah. Codex Tyranids, and they have absorbed a lot of that. I mean, the lictor that's uh, bending down, yeah. you look at how he's posed and how the, um, I don't know how to describe it, how all the bits jut out. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got that sharp Wayne England look. And I'm yeah, definitely, it's like the artwork come to life, isn't it? Effectively, it really you could identify is. that that's based on Wayne England artwork. Yeah, it is glorious. Absolutely. It's also, I mean, like the variety of builds that this suggests as well. Mm -hmm. From just the one set, I mean, you've got the the one on the left, the one from Leviathan that's standing upright. That's more yeah. like the uh, the second the, Ed miniature. Yeah, the classic mm. lifter, Yeah, that's awesome absolutely awesome and then on top of that you get the two new variants so there's the uh what's it called the 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 psychic one you've got uh you... neuro lictor probably that's probably what it's called isn't it? uh, the death leaper oh, uh, which is the that, bottom one that's, so that's insane one. that's, that's the edge lord one for that's me, a goth that's, for me, goth that, one. that's the one <laughs> The Death Leaper is the one that is gorgeous. That that for me is one of the best miniatures they've they've designed for years. I think it's one of the best monsters they've designed for years. It just it's mm -hmm. just so beautiful. Slice the top off and you can make it into uh, one of the the vampires. Oh, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, we make it very nice. Yes, Keep secrets that yeah. bottom part yeah. would. It's the influences on. It. I mean, I, I, the, that the bottom skirt, which is like a squid. Yeah. I just. Oh my god, it is beautiful. It is absolutely stunning. That is one I'm getting. Even if I didn't have any other Tyranids, that I'd have just to paint up and have around because it's so, so good. I'm, I'm going to go say that yes, it's called the Neuro Lictor, the, the one with the big brain, because I can't actually see its name anywhere. You can't see his name. <laughs> no, which is really annoying. But he, he is the most Cthulian motherfucking thing I have yeah. seen in 40k. Oh my god, he is weird as shit. Weird and brilliant. I love the fact that they're going down this way with the Tyranids. They're going really Lovecraftian with them. So they're looking yeah. more and more and more alien as they're going along. And I love that. I mm -hmm. absolutely love that. It looks more like a Geiger design, doesn't it? Which, of course, they're yeah. influenced by, you know, massively influenced by. He's brilliant. Absolutely love him. I particularly like the little ponytail tendril coming off the brain mm -hmm. for the back. Yeah, it's once again that symbiotic parasite creature that's yeah. just there doing all sorts of things. You, you see all the, the way that claws into the brain and just holds in. Love it. Absolutely mm. love it. Again, I'm going to be getting one of these. All I can think of is the Starship Troopers. They ate their brains! <laughs> oh, really? See, I see that tentacle and think of uh, Hellraiser 2. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I'm thinking. It's Chenard, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> right, if he that. was a tyrant. <laughs> In fact, you know what? Sod it. I, I, I will want one of each of these. Because yeah. they're just brilliant. I mean, every single one of these is brilliant. I mean, I would love uh, if the rumors are true and you can. Get, there's a detachment that lets you take a Lictor army. I mean, bloody hell, that's tempting. Yeah, no, that's actually, tempting. Yeah, these these four plus the um, the von Ryan leapers. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, you've got a, you've got a fast, fast army, and that's going to be ooh, and it's going to look amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez, no, it really it's going to look good. Wow. I mean, th these would have sold me on their own, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Out of interest, Andy, mm -hmm. the uh, the Death Leaper, uh, or, uh, as uh, as I think we should name him now, Mr. Edgelord, yeah. um, do you prefer the colour scheme on him? Because it's the same as the other ones, but it's got a much darker hue to it. The, yeah, the, the extra purple helps um, make it look a little bit more sinister. There's a lot less just pure white on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And even the white's been shaded with a lot more purple in the in the crevices and stuff. 
which mm-hmm. helps. I still think this would look better as Behemoth, but uh, oh, this yeah. is a better way of oh, doing yeah. that color scheme. Oh, absolutely. I can't believe they gave him a cape. It's just, it's mental. Absolutely, incredibly mental. Yeah. The, <sighs> yeah. I'm, Considering I'm, that not that long ago we were sort of bemoaning the uh, the Tyranid range, it's like, whoa, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Why well, you're saying that we uh, we spoke about something and all of a sudden, and then it, yes, yeah. <laughs> again in the classic pattern. What spiders when the then? Emperor's children it. never happens what with spiders? the Emperor's children. It always no. happens with something else. I think the the magic way of doing it isn't to go. We want to see. <laughs> it's to go. This is what we don't like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So I need you need to sit here and moan about the fact that there are no emperor's children. And I, I know, I know. We can do this sincerely. We can do this legitimately. Okay. There has never actually been a dedicated noise marine box set ever. Has ever. it all been? No, it's all been upgrades, hasn't it? It's all been upgrades. It has ah. all been upgrades. There was, and the last one of those was from three point five, like donkeys yeah, years yeah. ago. So there, there's a legitimate complaint for you. Warp spiders. At least there actually have been dedicated fucking <laughs> miniatures for them. Noise marines. There were three in second ed. That was it. Oof. That was it. It's like, yeah. come on. And then they got one resin miniature for a, uh, a Christmas special. Yes, which don't four get me wrong, years ago. great. Don't oh, get yeah, me wrong, yeah. it's lovely. But pff, come on, let's have some proper noise marines, right? Because people love them, despite the fact that there's never been a dedicated miniature set for them. People love those things. They're converting them all over the place. So, mm-hmm. who would you have as your big character for um, a, a, um? Uh, Empress Children Army, excluding Lucius and obviously oh, Yeah, there's loads in the background. I mean, the the big one for the Noise Marines would be um, Eidolon, because he was mm. one of the first Noise Marines. And he's a big Terminator armored Noise Marine. So yeah, he would be the one to do. Does Gruff have one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fabius I mean, is done. You don't need to worry about him. He's, no, no, Fabius no, is, no, he's, he's out he's there, good. yeah. Yeah. I honestly don't know what my answer would be. Um, mostly because of my head's full of bugs. Exactly. I do like <laughs> yeah. that prick, as he's also known. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean... Doom Rider. <laughs> oh, oh, damn it. I was, I was literally no. about to say Doom Rider. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people do want him back, don't they? Yep. And they could do a lot with that miniature now. Can you imagine what it would look like now? The wheels would actually be made of flame now, wouldn't they? Don't sell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I wouldn't even want him like riding the bike. I wouldn't even want a Jean-Claude Van Damme surfing the bike pose. Yeah, standing on it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. That's what you'd yeah. want. That's what you'd want. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in for Doom Rider. By the way, just to point it out, Big Swing and D says that the noise marine was plastic. Of course it was fucking plastic, Adam. Yes, yes. Stop it was plastic. Fucking yeah. talking tonight. <laughs> And but, I'm probably gonna... you, but the thing is, can you can you even conceive of that, guys? Imagine how many like miniatures there have been for Plague Marines. Yeah. How many miniature sets there have been for Plague Marines and Corn Berserkers and whatnot? There's been loads. There's been loads. Well, of they them. got pushed even... from Dark Imperium, and that point on, they right. were just like it's just an established thing that they're now a thing. Empress yeah. Children yeah. haven't ever been pushed, as far as I know. No, they really haven't. I mean, no. they're too sexy. They were... They're too sexy. They the People biggest like they the were sexiness. ever. The only time the Empress children were really dedicated was in the 3.5 codex. They had one mm. of the best army lists. They were really, really good back then. Um, but that was it. That's really been it. Yeah. It's such a shame because they're popular. People like them. Mm-hmm. People project. really like them. One uh, day. Maybe yes, the end of 10. It will happen. Maybe. It will happen. Eventually. Apparently, it's been in the work for three thousand years or so. Yeah, <laughs> my God. And then, I mean, all my focus will shift then because they're one of my favourites. I love them, love them yeah. to bits. Ah, oh. shall we move on to some tick attack, tick attack, little bug yeah, people? Yeah, let's. I mean, do you? I mean, do you guys remember the original Biovores? Oh God, yeah. They were crap. I mean, they Orcs. were crap. Yeah, yeah, oh. they were utter shite. I mean, they've they've <laughs> never been good. Biovores have never had a good miniature ever. They had fun faces though. They always looked yeah. happy. They looked fun and silly and happy and yeah, cartoony. Yeah, they grinny. did. But these, this is more like it. This is more like it, isn't it? These things, you look at them and you can see how they move. You can mm-hmm. actually imagine it in your mind. You can see them scuttling like a crab, right, from left to right to position themselves. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, good God. 
Um, and you were talking about the weapon symbiote, Adam, the, the, yeah. the parasite thing. Well, I mean, these guys exemplify it. That is just a load of cock and balls stuffed into an exoskeleton. Yeah. And Absolutely, yeah. It, oh, my God. I, <laughs> I really, really love this guy. I mean, what I love about it is the fact you can tell from the miniature that the, paras the symbiote is in charge. Oh, yeah. That's brilliant. That's a really clever narrative thing to do in the miniature, right? Because all of the focus is on it, right? It's really clever. I honestly, no word of a lie. You know the um, the secondary build that you've got uh -huh. with the, where everything is really just pushed into the weapon, yeah. And you've got that curve in the armor. Uh huh. I want to get that, and I want to take that off the the gun off, and I want to have that as a throne, and I want to have somebody riding this thing yeah. for one of my fantasy armies as some big spider. Um, I honestly. No word of a lie, I have a feeling that this might end up being one of those things that I get a lot of to do different mm -hmm. things with. Yeah, yeah. I adore the Bio 4. It's brilliant. I mean, it is a fantastic miniature. I love the fact that they've had the balls to completely redesign it, you know, to remove yeah. it from what it was before, because that was kind of necessary. It didn't even look like it worked in the original min like the original miniature. You couldn't really feel how it would move or whatever. And, it, and every miniature since has been a bit half assed you know they've never really been that great looking no this looks like and they've never the thing for me is they've never really looked like they're part of the tyranid army they look no. like they come from somewhere else like you said they look like orcs right well that was what they were meant to be wasn't it the, yes. the orc when genus they... was absorbed which makes <laughs> no fucking sense because they were mushrooms and they've abandoned that idea since yeah. they they've never re ran with that idea again there was that one codex wasn't there where everything in the tyranids was because oh they absorbed this so you had this from yeah. space marines oh they absorbed this so you had this from the eldari oh they absorbed this so you had this from orcs they've abandoned that and that's no. that's a good thing the yes. tyrant guard with their fused chests because they ate space marines because they ate space <laughs> marines right it's, oh that's not how it works no. it's too simplistic it's too silly you know no I'm glad they've abandoned that. And this it's too, this, it's too Zerg. It feels like they were just copy yeah. after Zerg at that point. Well, it predates yeah. the Zerg. Can't, no, does it? Hang on. Mm. No, actually, it won't. It'll be around about the same time, so it'll predate mm -hmm. it for development. Yeah. But, uh, I think but you... either way, it was just too one to one, wasn't it? It was too yeah. like narrow and simplistic. So, oh, here are the Tyranid versions of Space Marines. Oh, here are the Tyranid versions of Orcs. It's like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> and do you remember the Zona Fropes? Were what happens when they ate the Elder? That's, yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's like, come on, come on. But you never got anybody going. And here is what happened to the Tyranids ate grots. No, you know? no, you didn't get that, did you? <laughs> Well, does because the squeaks by that point were fully orc. The uh, <laughs> the Tyranids only had squeaks in uh, Rogue Trader. Mm. But my God, the, these guys! And I think you're right, and the Pyrovore is even better. I think the Pyrovore build is is just magnificent. It really is. It's. I never thought that a bug with a giant cock and balls would be something <laughs> I'd be massively into, but I am. Big old veiny balls on that bastard. <laughs> yeah, is. it's great. Uh, lots of potential Slanesh conversions there, I'm sure. <laughs> I honestly... What comes next and what's going to uh, still appear on whilst we're doing this show is absolutely, it's better. It is, in a lot of ways, better than the Biovore and the Pyrovore. Yeah. But my heart is with these guys. Yeah. I adore them. I think they are just spectacular they I... are lovely aren't they they're really cool and it's so nice to see you know it's nice to see the biovore being good for once yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, good god it's the i've got ideas of like getting those dust mite things and try to see if i can mix and match some uh some parts from these things to make mm -hmm. biovores with slightly longer legs and yeah. stuff like that you know it's honestly um i adore i am in love with the Pyrovore and the Biovore, I think these are probably my favorite. The best miniatures a Games Workshop have put out since I don't know when. Yeah, just... uh, honestly, I feel the same about the Death Leaper and the, 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 mm. the, the you know, it, I'm, I'm actually amazed. I'm actually kind of incredulous, to be honest, at how good these are. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, actually, I'm going to rephrase that. These are the best 40k miniatures. Yeah. That, yeah. Of uh, course. Of course. Come out. The cities of Sigma, of course, being the uh, highlight. <laughs> uh, for... <laughs> ah, love it. <laughs> um, yeah, the, these guys are amazing. These are absolutely amazing, and the fact that you have these proper big volatile weapons on the back of them mm -hmm. that just spurt mines out oh, mm -hmm. arcing jets of mine um <laughs> but for me i mean the biggest surprise was the new additions the new stuff the stuff we mm -hmm. haven't seen before so this thing who expected this yeah right no no there's a, a picture at the top at the top of the page um and it's got the big pyrovore and is surrounded by lots of things. There are two things that stand out in that picture. One, my God, how old the Tyranid warriors look compared to everything else around them. Yeah, they need, they need an upgrade. Need an upgrade. They yeah. really, yeah. really need upgrading to bring them into, into line, right? Yeah. And the other thing is, what are the things to the right of the pyrovore? There's like little Tyranid termagant guys that are blind and pink. Anyone else see them? Mm, what are we looking at so it's the big picture um, mm. towards the top of the page after the video and it's like a really zoomed in picture you can tell because of the amount of grain that's on it <laughs> they've, got like, they've got like a load of sex armor on yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the uh, the sexagant yes that's yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I saw these but I couldn't place what they were I thought they'd been no. announced and I just hadn't read about them somewhere let me have a look oh, I'm not entirely sure. The, uh, this is on the Biovore page, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let me have a peek. So you've got the, the Tyranid Warrior at the front of the picture just going, ah, yeah. Uh, mm. And he looks real fucking old. Oh, the Neurogaunts. It's, uh, they're the Neurogaunts. It's just yeah, they've been those painted. Are the Neurogaunts. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're the ones that come in the Leviathan set. They're, the, right. the, they're basically the Termagants that, that accompany the Neuro Tyrant. Um, so they spread the shadow in the warp. When yeah. they move around, which is kind of cool, right? Yeah, so it's, it's just the paint scheme that's throwing me off on that. Yeah, then. Right. I love the eyeless thing. I think that really yeah. works for the Tyranids. Actually, if I had mm -hmm. if I had the the time, what I and you know what I would do is I would use green stuff to to get rid of the eyes and all the others, give them just like an alien style ridge, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would look amazing, wouldn't it? That would look good, wouldn't it? Right. Oh, fuck it. You've just sold me on a Tyranid army. Yeah, go for it. Do it. Why not? Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going go to make, make blind, dark-coloured, black and blue Tyranids. Yes. yes. Right. Problem solved. Yeah, there okay. we are. Now, now that uh, I have to explain that to my wife, let's move mm. on to the next one. Well, I mean, you say move on the next one. What the hell? Who expected this? This was a shock, right? Well, that's a fucking zoonoid. Yeah, um, I mean, but mm -hmm. the scale of it and everything. I mean, first of all, I just never expected them to introduce a bigger monster than the Hive Tyrant, right? Nope. Or like a, a more senior monster rather than the Hive Tyrant. That was the thing. Something that's, that, that, that's like essentially from Epic. Yeah. Well, didn't we suspect that they were going to have to make something big to have your, your Bane Blade price point equivalent? I mm. suppose they were good. Yeah, it was inevitable. Really. I think we discussed this uh, last time, but we didn't really know what they would do. Yeah. I, I just did not expect this. You know, these things are brilliant. I mean, wow. I just, I love everything about them. I, I think the design is fantastic. The, those big sort of spore chimney things that are coming out of their backs, the, mm -hmm. the dual brains, everything. Uh, you say dual brains, depending on the build you've got, it's either, uh, <laughs> there's, there's like six or seven brains oh, in yeah, there. You're right. yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. It's got brains all over the shop. <laughs> it's brains as far as the eye can see. So it's ridiculous. This is effectively the, the, the sort of demon Primark level tyranid isn't it this is yeah. going to be a monster this thing well it's um it's slightly smaller than a knight you know it's yeah. uh yeah. it's fucking huge so it's the greater demon this is yeah. effectively the greater demon of the tyranids yeah uh the norn emissary i mean first of all i love the fact that the norn of ac are actually in the name so the norn queens are obviously the the really big tyranid the intergalactic tyranid entities yeah. the mothers that that spawn all of the Tyranids. Well, the, the Norn Queens are the things that are in the middle of the uh, the Hive ship fleet. Yeah, yeah. There. There's one 
hive ship that's just basically a giant brain mm -hmm. that controls the rest of the hive fleet. And we've never seen what they look like. We've never no. kind of got any idea. And I'm I'm happy with that. Yeah. Well, but, they're not going to go into combat, so it makes sense. Yeah. No, yeah, they, they're not designed for it. They coordinate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be at, at closest we'd get we'd get an objective marker. And that would yeah, be or one. maybe even like a fortification. Yeah, you know? scenery they kind of thing. Move, can they? So, you know. yeah. I think the closest you would get would be a um, like a version of the boarding actions where you're going uh -huh. inside a Tyranid ship. That's the closest you get because that's how big these things are. Yeah, you don't right. you don't fight them. You'd have to go inside it. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, we get the sphincter again. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Bring back Tyranid attack. Bring back the sphincter. Oh God, yeah. God, Tyranid Attack was... Why Tyranid Attack hasn't had a reprint with new stuff? I don't know. It... Mm. Silly. Very silly. Tyranid Attack was an amazing game. It's Space um, Hulk, but what if the Tyranids were the, being invaded? Mm -hmm. No, it's Space Hulk, but neon. That's why I <laughs> love it. <laughs> also, you don't get terminated, you get scouts. So it's like... Yeah, it's poor scouts. <laughs> oh. I it came with like a, a two part story in White Dwarf where it's just scouts getting shit eaten. It was like. But yeah. Oh, yeah. oh no. Uh, so, yeah, we get two versions of this the non emissary. The non emissary and the assimilator, yeah? Yeah. And the non emissary, it basically, it's a. a it gets an idea in its head of one thing that it has to kill. Yeah. And it gets buffs for going after that, which. Honestly, as a game mechanic, I am in for. That I love is... it. It's the character killer, right? If you've yeah. got like a uh, like a demon primark or something that you want gotten rid of, well, you I like the, after it. I like the idea that this thing will hunt down the leader of your army, and then you put it against an imperial guard. It just walks <laughs> up and like a commissar or something. Like, yeah. Oh, who do you? Yeah, he's going to end up eating, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow, I'm looking forward to seeing how it stacks up against things like Greater Demons. I imagine it's going to be on the le the same level. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there's a picture of it next to a uh, Wraith Knight, and it is... It's massive, yeah. isn't it? It's huge. This is thing that is... the Assimilator version, or is that the MSO that's the Assimilator? Assimilator. Yeah, okay. that's the yeah. Assimilator. It's huge, this thing. I will it say... Looks like, it looks like it's basically got every biomorph going. Yep. Wait, it's got flesh hooks, it's got the scything talons, it's got everything. Well, it, it's a colony of parasites. Yeah. Which is such an amazing idea that <laughs> this thing gets birthed and then all of a sudden it's all these weird things are forced onto it. It's like, here yeah. you go. I will say, um, the emissary, uh, sorry, the assimilator version, that is a very difficult model to take a good picture of. Mm -hmm. It's a lot there, going on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, that is a downside, I think. Um, it looks incredible, but you've got two pictures taken from two very different angles, and both of them are really messy, and it's hard to work out what's actually happening. It's hard to kind of to pass, isn't it? You know, yeah, to see yeah. quite like where the bits are and everything. Interestingly, it's easier on the emissary for some reason. Yeah, it, it is I don't weird, know why. It? I don't know why. I don't know whether it's because they, it's got different biomorphs or what, or the the silhouette is more distinct. I think it's because it doesn't have the flesh hooks and it has yeah. like just simple hands. Yes. Like it's got the claws yeah. and it's got the simple hands rather than the extra weapons. And the extra mm -hmm. weapons have the extra uh, like greedy details and paint that's added right, onto them yeah. as well. So maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's it. Yeah, your eye is drawn in unusual directions as a yeah. result. Yeah. Of that. Um, Either Darren, way, I mean, they, they both look great. They really do. But my certainly my uh, my preference is for the emissary version. Uh, agreed. Totally agreed. That the emissary has just got so much bulk and oh, he's. I mean, the the fact that it looks like something that's just kicked the shit out of the guy for makes me very mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. See, I I prefer the head specifically on the uh, assimilator. I think the yeah. head's a lot cooler. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I think the the confusing silhouette works better with the uh the emissary mm -hmm. yeah because it's just yeah. simplified i like the head uh, more darren yeah. on the uh, the chat says i thought the entire thing was the known queen uh, no the known queen there is a entity that is the known queen although obviously it is the center of the tyranid uh, fleet mm -hmm. and everything else is an extension of the known queen so that there is an actual entity that is the known queen itself. So they very much sort of embody the hive minds, yeah? Yeah, and as I say, they are like 
basically just giant lumps of flesh that float through the uh, the float through space. Awesome. Um, I mean, nah. what if it was just the Twitter logo? <laughs> <laughs> And like the Tyranids is that. just like Twitter users. Well, that'd be, it'd be easy to defeat then. You just have to send Elon after a while. <laughs> that would, uh, oh, that's right. the end of that. After a while, they'll just not pay the bills and uh, it'll get shut down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, this range is insane. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've just pulled out all the stops with the Tyranids. I like the bases as well because they've got the yeah. little uh, Tyranid yeah. bits coming through the floor on, on the, uh, this one and on the, the Lictors as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it's an amazing upgrade for the Tyranids. Honestly, do, do we think that if the Space Marines would have won, the preview would have been, and this is what's coming to reinforce the Tyranids? Because I honestly cannot think what they would have done if the Space Marines had won. What you know, what what new Space Marine shit would they have said? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's it's yeah. It it's, certainly wouldn't have been if that were if it was just like loads of new Space Marine miniatures, which will come, of course, eventually. Um, it just another bunker. Exciting, would it? It would have been a bit boring in comparison. One more bunker. One more turret. One yeah, more silly no. buggy. One more teddy bear hug her armor. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have been uh, nothing but here's Terminators with different weapons. <laughs> See, that's a, yeah, yeah, that's actually a good point. We'll probably get like the Terminator variants, won't we? Yeah. Do you yeah, think there'll be yeah. any shitty Space Marine unit that the reveal? Um, there is a pirate. Because unfortunately, the Space Marines usually get one, at least one shit model per year at this point. <laughs> I think it's like three months. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. A lieutenant's count, I suppose. There is the, the tyrant, um, tyrannic war veterans, isn't there? So I'm wondering if that's something you'd see. The uh, the marines are just wearing Possibly. bits of yeah. That'd be fun. That'd be actually be kind of fun, wouldn't it? You know, mm, that'd be really good for salamanders, actually. Mmm. Mm. That works super that. well for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And given the yeah, well, tenth thus far, yeah. that would make sense. So, out of all the preview stuff that we've uh, we've discussed. What is your guy's favourites? The Lictors. Yeah, Lictors yeah. are really good. For me, it's the Lictors by, yeah. you know, by a significant margin. Yeah, and like George said, if you can make an army of them, that's pretty cool. You can't make yeah. an, a, an army of emissaries. That's just... <laughs> that would be, <laughs> I don't think that that would be a little much, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you buy five emissaries and then you just stick them together like a Voltron. Well, to be <laughs> fair, if you did take like an army of emissaries, I imagine it'd be like taking an army of knights, right? So That'd be a fun fight. battle on the on a. I'd like to see that fight. Yeah, I'd like to see like knights versus norns. Yeah, kind of similar, you know. Knights and norns. <laughs> I've just realised that the back of the picture of the um, the assimilator, there is what I think is a old resin Eldar uh, wraith knight type thing done up as a statue. Yeah, it's the wraith knight set. It's just, yeah. just painted as a statue. <laughs> I just noticed it went. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I like that. Oh, oh, that thing. Okay, yeah. that looks really. They've done a great job making that look statuey. Yeah, yeah it's marbly. Cool, right? That looks good. Yeah. It is quite I, fun, I, isn't it? It is the Wraith Knight, definitely. I just didn't register it at all. It's like, oh yeah, that's what it is. That's really cool. Uh, uh, that I mean, poor myself. Wraith. He looks so old. <laughs> He's just like, help me. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> I, I'm about to have all of my gooey bits taken away. No, not my goo. <laughs> uh, right then, so uh, that's all the preview stuff. So mm -hmm. let's just bang through a couple of other little bits that I thought yeah. were interesting. Um, so some board games are coming. Uh, we've seen yeah. Space Marine before, uh, but more exciting than that is Combat Arena, Lair of the Beast. Yeah, this is nice. I mean, they're going to use this, obviously, to reintroduce a lot of the Blackstone Fortress stuff, right? Yeah. Which yep, is yep, fine because yep. they're all great. Yeah, yep. but not not the stuff that you really want. Like, <laughs> the, 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 I think the stuff people really want are like the the uh, the Imperial Guard. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and the they really renegade. want the the couple of space. Maybe maybe they don't want the space marines as much. But mm. I, I think that I, I know that Griff would like the sp spindle drones. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> I, I still hold out hope that one day I can run a spindle drone army. Yeah, you know, I was Just about to call the Batman. Amble the uh, an Umber Hulk, which is like accurate <laughs> but wrong, right? Yeah. You can get the Amble Hulk and convert it into a Tyranid thing at this point, I suppose. Oh, totally. Yeah, it looks. I mean, it it yeah, fits it's practically it there. Fits. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm just happy because it means that uh, you just get a load of character models and the character models from Blackstone Fortress are just they're great. great. Oh, they're, they're brilliant. Yeah. What, what they I really like, though, brilliant. is really character for model, really character for model, really character for model, loads of really character for models. Uh, you've got the Amble, which is just absolutely mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yeah, it's you've amazing. You've got uh, the, uh, the Man of Iron, uh, which is... Uh, you are 025, who's mm -hmm. just great. And then you've got, hello, I'm a space marine from the I'm space just, marine heroes I'm, set. I'm just a space marine, yeah. <laughs> oh, is he from the heroes set? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> just, I just, that just made me really happy. Hello. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's a nice one, I suppose. He's right. yeah, yeah, he does his he's, job. He's one of the few space marines that has, like, a beard. Yeah, that's a fair <laughs> point, actually. Yeah, that is a fair point. But more yeah. of that, actually, you know, more more beardy marines, please. Not space, you know, non space wolf beardy marines. Oh god, yeah. Nice, right? It's it's actually quite hard to find bearded space marines, and it I is. think like like there should be a lot. There should be right. a lot more, definitely. Yeah, for the dark angels, you know, the knightly ordered, they should be yeah, beardy. They should really. actually. Now that you mention it, yeah, there should be more yeah. beards than the dark angels. Yeah, you're right. Sanguinius's Looking... boys probably shouldn't be beardy generally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Angelic and all that. Uh, yeah, because yeah, they've beards. got a more sort of classically sort of aquiline thing yeah. going on, don't if they? You, so. Is it Lamenters who are mainly the Black Rage kind of guys? Which ones are the, the ones who are already affected by the Black Rage the most? Oh, the yeah. um, it's the Flesh Terrors. Yeah, you could probably terrors. have the Flesh Terrors with like beards, but like really scruffy beards because mm -hmm. they don't care. Yeah, it's definitely the Flesh Terrors. They yeah. are, they're, they're basically oh. Imperial Corn Berserkers. Yeah, I'd just make heads that would then be usable on uh, vampires. And <laughs> just do a vampire head perk and have them swap over. That'd be good. I'd be happy yeah, with that. Yeah, it'd work, actually, yeah. Much to my annoyance, I thought for a second that this guy's beard was just a chin strap beard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I thought, what you could do is give him a little bit of floppy hair and have uh, Brother Thu. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, much to my sadness, no, that's, uh, he has a moustache as well. No, um, this works with Brother White, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that'd be brilliant, actually. Just paint him so it looks like he's wearing a business suit. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was really cool. Uh, yeah, also, there's an fun. Underworlds um, board yeah. game as well. Another which, one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's been a few of cool. these. Fun. Yep, cool. Uh, Cities of Sigma, they've got, of course, their usual update, uh, yeah. which is just telling you what's coming out. And um, what's what's not going to be in it as well, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, so there's uh, no new steam tank, which is interesting, but it is in the it is in the book. Yeah, yeah. So steam you're going to have theme. to order that if you want yeah. it. Lame. Uh, yeah. yeah. Online, it's a shame, it's a shame that they because really that should be a centerpiece. They should have done a new yeah. one. Yeah, I, I agree there. Uh, Imperial Griffin's going to stay as well, the Celestial mm -hmm. Hurricanum, which is really interesting because as much as the most of the Celestial Carriage is less than 10 years old, it's still got those ancient freaking horses. <laughs> horses. They're going to really stand out, aren't they? Given the, the, They're going to the be donkeys. It's going to be yeah. held by donkeys versus the uh, the actual cavalry, which is really sad. Yeah, it's, it's unusual. Oh. It's odd that. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I just, there's a part of me that's like, oh come on. But on the other hand, I'm also really happy because, yay! Yes, because it's there, right? Derpy horse. <laughs> there's also been an update on, you know, where you can take like um, Duarden and Elven, yeah, fact uh, factors in the army, which makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, the uh, you got the dwarfs, the, mm -hmm. sorry, the Duarden. You've got the. Uh, how, how are we all pronouncing elves? Because I'm still pronouncing elves. It's elves. elves. It's elves. Yeah. yeah, it just, elves. just has an A at the front. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's elves. <laughs> it's, it's Imperial Guard. That's how it is. So I keep like tying myself a bit knots trying to say elves. No, it's elves. <laughs> it's, it's, it is elves. They've just put an A at the front. And it, it only it's, makes sense if you say it with a swatch. Name. It's yeah, literally yeah. just copyright reasons to just call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. Yeah. I, I keep trying to like say it, but I find that I'm just saying elves as if. Yeah, yeah, that's about how you Arnold. pronounce it. That's it, yeah. it's elves. <laughs> but it keeps coming out like Schwarzenegger saying it. Elves. <laughs> we are the elves. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, units leaving the range. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. I wonder, I wonder where they're going. Um, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Forge world. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, the uh, stuff that's leaving, the Free Guild General on foot, the Crossbowmen, Free Guild Guard, um, Hellblaster. That Hellblaster that, is that, archaic! How old is it? Uh, old. Yeah. That's never been updated, right? Like, no, the original so. is probably lead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the original was the, lead. That was yeah. the plastic kit for... 7th Ed? Right, yeah. right. So, pretty old. <laughs> uh, the Free Guild Pistolers are going, Free Guild Greatswords are going, Demigriff Knights are going, which I th that's weird to me because I thought they would fit in really well. But Yeah, I would have thought so too, but um, yeah, they're well. a bit old. They'll be yeah. if, if they're going anywhere, they'll be maybe shifted to... Um, they'll be the old... old yeah. whatever, whatever the fuck the old world still, still is, yeah. which we still don't know. Who fucking knows? No. But it says that all of these are going to be in the old world, doesn't it? Well, you, you did yeah. make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on? The Flamespire Phoenix, the yeah. Phoenix Guard, Wildwood Rangers, Sisters of the Thorn, the Nomad Prince, which is a bit of a shame because we have yeah. a character who's a yeah. freaking Nomad Prince who has books, and they yeah. are some of the best books that AOS has put out there. Yeah. Should he be going? Can he not be used for the Sylvaneth? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I suppose the, they've really. Just got rid of all of the uh, the human, like the mortal part of the silver neth, haven't they? It's all. Just... I suppose so. That's yeah. a fair point. I mean, it's a shame, but yeah, they're all tree people now. They're all dryads. And uh, yep. So we'll have more information on the cities of Sigma very soon as launch approaches and keep your spyglasses polished for a new old world development diary later in July. Sure. Cool. Yeah. We'll okay. we'll get one new model. I'm sure. <laughs> Just weeded me out now. So really, we now we kind of know what the cities of Sigmar look like, right? And what they're going yeah. to be, which is cool. Cities, yeah. yeah. And I, I still say that uh, this is perfection. Yeah, it's this good. Is... It's good. I mean, it's <laughs> oddly well, enough, I think the the, the image they have with the dwarfs, with uh, what they call the Iron Busters, is that what that unit's called? They've got the image with. Uh, I think Iron they Drakes. Are... Iron, Iron Drakes. Drakes. That's it. I think they actually mesh in pretty damn well, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. they do, don't they? They work rather well. What army are they from? They're just, just the dwarves. dwarves. Yeah, just, yeah, just general dwarves. Fantasy yeah. dwarves. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, I think just dwarves. because of like, their full set of armor. Uh, maybe mm. they're, they're obviously not the most dynamic kit, but they mm. are plastic, well, they do they're fit. plastic aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah and they, they do fit. Yeah. They fit really I well. So, so. Yeah. Honestly, that kit, the Iron Drakes kit, is gorgeous. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty solid. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it. it. The, it's a weird one. The sort of cities of Sigma stroke dispossessed Dwardin. They <laughs> don't look that old, you know. Mm. They they actually work really well, mostly because I think that dwarves don't really need to be dynamic, you know. <laughs> no, they don't. You're right. It's the, hard the, to make them dynamic, isn't it? You know, they they often look wrong when they try to make them too. Yeah, dynamic. yeah. Unless it's like you know, a troll slayer, they're yeah. Um, yeah, very low center of gravity. They're yeah, not, yeah. Gonna, not gonna do much. So I guess as well with like the faces, you don't need to worry about them being super on point because they need to be exaggerated because the dwarves yes, yeah, right. they need a big nose yes, right. but they a human like... face you know when a human doesn't look right and an elf yes. is just like a more sculpted slender human so yeah. again you kind of needs to be a bit more on point no you're dwarves absolutely just right like, ah, you know, but they, they need to be just a little bit more exaggerated don't they ooh, mm. big dumb cheeks and big silly nose ooh yeah. just want a big <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> little <shit>. beard <laughs> the shit just happened there <laughs> Have you never wanted to brush a dwarf's beard? I, Brindle's beard. I have actually... You just reminded me of something that I was thinking about the other day. There was a conversation on the Facebook group about what? how um, dwarfs <laughs> all had Scottish accents, right? Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's like dwarfs in... All oh, they could be Welsh. I think they could be Welsh. I could see well, one with a good Welshian accent. <laughs> two, th two thoughts sprung to mind, right? Number one... What do you think of when you think of dwarfs? You think of their facial hair. Right? Yeah. What do you think of when you think of Victorian England? You think of the mad facial hair. <laughs> so, so I quite like the idea of dwarfs having top hats and monocles, and that's how you... <laughs> yeah. But then I thought, nah, let, let's... I wonder how far you could push it. And I've come across the idea that all dwarfs are now Italian-American, and I am... Absolutely in for New York Italian dwarfs. <laughs> I, I have a, I have a silly idea for you, Gruff. Okay, because you you got the um, 
Uh, oh god, what they called the dwarves in the sky, the sky ones. You, you, yeah, you the know, sky you ones. Know. <laughs> yeah. How about sky dwarfs. Yeah. you remold a uh, a doom wheel into one mm. of those old school big wheel bicycles and then put on the top a dwarf with a you monocle a and zig a penny farthing. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, a dwarf with a penny idea. farthing. That's a brilliant I, idea. I think you that's very character. Son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> that's I a think... fantastic idea. A doom wheel penny farthing. Again, um, something that maybe they should have gone a bit more in with the card drawn. That is a brilliant yeah. idea. I, in all honesty, what are other like th uh, that's like incredible? That, you know the Prestige. You know um, yes, the movie yes. the Prestige and all that yep. kind of era's weird science stuff. Do you mm -hmm. think we could take that aesthetic and maybe like Bioshock Infinite aesthetic mm -hmm. and use that for the card drawn Overlord? So it's not mm -hmm. just it's not just a dwarf in just solid armor, which is most of the card drawn. Yeah. So and sort of the balloon, like Nikola Tesla kind of yeah. like dual. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. And the Penny yeah. Farthing. Yeah. And wow. you could have like I like the idea of their. Um, they're, they're, they're wizards, they're rune lords, being dressed up as, like, gentlemen. I think that would yeah, be quite yeah. fun. Yeah, so like Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, basically. Yeah, yeah instead of, like, idea. having a staff, he has, like, a pocket watch that he flips yeah, out. Yeah, wow. You kind of had that with the Caradron guy that you got with um, Cursed Oh, City. yes. There is one, isn't That's there? That's true, yes. And, like, a cane, yeah? Yeah, I'm... I'm absolutely in for that as an idea. Yeah. I, That's I, a great idea, yeah. I adore it. So, uh, Call me GW. We have very silly ideas on this show, but you might get something out of them. So I'm going to put this out for a. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put this out to the uh, to the listeners at home yep. and everyone in the chat. Which would you rather see? A quintessential steampunk uh, indifference engine era dwarf, or Italian American? Hey, what what a man are you? Type dwarf. <laughs> like Mario, effectively. Oh. No. Oh, actually, yes. That that's bang on. Shit in hell. Hi. Um. A hero <laughs> Caradron of uh, uh, dwarf Da Vinci, and he has like the full <laughs> yes. like human bird thing. Yes. But he's a hero yeah. too special. Da he Vinci. Be the, yes. The inventor for the Caradron, and he like drops absolutely. Bombs on That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Fun. Da Vinci as a as a Caradron or a Votan in 40k. Yeah. yeah you could yeah. call him Dowie Vinci. Oh. That, would, that would work so well. That oh, would fun. work so well. That's fun. That's Bloody hell. Really I mean, cool. if you were really, I mean, if you were really into it, you could even go and look at some of Da Vinci's designs for flying engines and mm -hmm. make them. Yeah. Now, due to the way that AOS works and how you can take allies, you can take dispossessed gyrocopters as an mm -hmm. ally for a Caradron mm -hmm. force, which is something I've, I've been considering yeah. the idea of. I really like the idea using gyrocopter rules to just have dwarfs in. Da Vinci flying machines. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, That's a brilliant a theme for a vote, uh, like a, a Caradron arm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. A Wright Brothers plane, th that oh, kind of di Dick Dastardly God. flying machines plane. Yeah. yeah. yeah you could those, just run. those wonderful men and their flying machines. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that'd God be fun almighty. as well. Yeah. yeah. It's a great theme. It's a great theme. You know those um, machines uh, that we've recently made out of wood where they put them on a beach and they've got big um, sails and they just like move perpetually? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Those kind of things would be quite interesting for yeah, designs for yeah. vehicles as well. Definitely. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We've just saved the the, uh, the Caradron. <laughs> <laughs> There's no the saving the Fire Slayers. We can't do no, anything I, with that. I, They're I, broken. No, I think... I, Apart from going back to our elemental theme. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I've done that. I, I, I've made Legion of the Damned Fire Slayers. That's, that's it. That's that, the only that's thing. That's how you do it. it. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, that's the way to do them, definitely. In humanoids, that's it. <laughs> Just go in humanoids with them. <laughs> fire Slayers, Fire Slayers, <laughs> the Fire the Birds Within. Um, <laughs> That wasn't the tune to Inhumanoids at all. <laughs> it was yeah. kind of close. It was almost it was there, but close. Inhumanoids, it was the... Inhumanoids. It was the non-copyrightable ver version. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, so we'll get back to City of Sigmar in a second. Yeah. Uh, so Necromunda's getting a new rulebook. Ah, cool. Yep. Nice. So uh, it's my... nice. It's still going. Yeah, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, and those books are great. All of the all of the Necromunda books have been brilliant, and I'm sure this one will be too. I think this is the end of the this run of Necromunda now. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. this is the book. The that it's a box set. Out, yeah, well, it, it just means they've got the book on the shelf. Yeah, yep. this book yeah. will stay there for the next couple of years. 
uh, probably, I'd say probably it'll, it'll hang around for about five to six years, mm -hmm. and this is what they're going to be using now. Yeah. It's got everything in it, like yep. literally everything from the Looks last... Looks pretty comprehensive. It's big, isn't it? Eight years of Necromunda. Mm. Do you think eight Necromunda years. will go when uh, the new new epic's coming? Do you think that's the, the idea? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. 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 Very, very, very likely that uh, mm. this is... Like, like Lord of the Rings did, where they just got the book, combined everything into one singular book, and yep. there you go, that's the rules. There's no box set. It's not a huge amount of shelf space. Just get what you need. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's and, it. And that's I, fine. To be honest with you, I'm quite happy with that. It's fine. Yeah, you, I mean, you know, it's had a good run. It's Very good amazing run. Amazing run, yeah. 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 It's had yeah. a really good run. It's, so. it's outlasted every other version of Necromunda that came right. before it. Right, <laughs> so, and it has been very successful. The miniatures range is gorgeous. The books are all really good. Yep. Can't really uh, complain. Yeah, and, and the fact that they haven't ended it as such. Yeah. Um, but that's very much what this is. And the, the fact that uh, they've moved the story of Necromunda on as well. Yeah, is, it's oh, good. It's been really, really, cool. really good. It's, I mean, for my money, it's been the best version. You know, I've really enjoyed this version of Necromunda. I, from a logical point of view, yes. <laughs> but, but from an emotional point of view. From an emotional point of view. <laughs> point of view, yeah. Necromunda, the dark, gritty, metal-clad uh, Necromunda with its goblin green bases will always uh, have a soft, space, soft place in my heart. Uh-huh. Why the fuck were the go goblin green bases in Necromunda? Because that's how Necromunda, everything was painted. Right? Yes. Everything was painted with goblin green. It was, yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. where they come from. Chaos yeah. Wastes, you know, wherever. doesn't matter. So, yeah, Forge it... World, yeah. Why not? <laughs> goblin green bases. Yeah. yeah. I just, uh, I, I just wanted to take a moment just to, you know, just salute Necromunda as mm -hmm. it. Uh, as Maybe it we'll be into... surprised. Maybe something new will come out for it. Yeah. I doubt I, it, but yeah. I doubt it. But you never know. Maybe the it'll tides be, will turn. It'll be Forge World from this point on. That yeah. that'll be my guess. It'll. I would uh, think so. Yeah, it, it's it's going into it's going into quiet time now for Necromunda, mm. but uh, that's fine. That's absolutely that's fine. That's okay. It, yeah, yeah, it's 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 fine. I mean, it's it's been so strong. Mm -hmm. In, in all honesty, I'm quite happy because it means I can just grab this book and that'll, that's me playing Necromunda for the next few yeah. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. It's nice, actually, isn't it? It's nice to have that. Yeah, absolutely. The, the fact that I've like looked at each version of Necromunda that's come out the last few years and gone, oh, God, I want that, but I cannot mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. swing it because I don't play enough Necromunda to justify buying it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I... Um, it's had a, a load of amazing miniatures. It's had some truly bonkers stuff from Forge World. It has genuinely been an amazing run for Necromunda. So mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to just give it a little salute. Yeah, hmm. good stuff. Good stuff. From the old to the brand new then. Uh, motherfuckers have been stealing some Skaven shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, sorry, Giselles. So I'm too bad for you, bros. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. The... the, the, the so Skaven lawyers can't get a, uh, a foot in. These are called fusiliers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I do like the joke of the free guild fusiliers and not a type of corkscrew pasta. Uh, <laughs> quite good. <laughs> it's one of the things I've loved about the Cities of Sigma Diary, that there has been these weird little jokes in there that really, really been nice. Once again... The Cities of Sigma are so far above a lot of stuff in AOS, it's mm -hmm. not even funny. Mm. Oh, These are... yeah, they're stunning. I mean, you know, again, they're just they're just people. They're just guys, right? They're just people, yeah. just human beings. And they are really stunning. They're really, really stunning miniatures. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. I like the fact that they've got Zulu-style bayonets attached to these uh, <laughs> very, very heavy guns. I was going to say, what are you going to use the bayonets for, exactly? I mean, well, the, the only way the they're going to work is... is if someone runs at you and it yeah. themselves, right? Maybe they've got anti-charge, so if like a unit charges them, they'll like slap the shields down. I could see that. Yeah. I'm not sure how how effective it would be. <laughs> not very. You'd have yeah. more. You'd have more luck just hitting them, clubbing them with the guns. <laughs> maybe maybe the idea is like when someone gets too close, you pick the gun off the shield, kick the shield <laughs> down, and use it like you would a normal bayonet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know. 
I, I think uh, it looks cool. I think it's it looks a good cool. I think to it. that's. I think that is more the case. The rule looks of cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Why not? I love the fact that what you have is a cannon with a bayonet. Yeah. That's, it's like what? It's, <laughs> it's so absolutely it's like, stupid. I yeah. adore it. I'm all in. Right. I, yeah. I think it's great. It's, 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 it is really brainless. It, it it does not work in any functional way whatsoever. But I like it. I like the fact that there's a, um, a Mongolian guy with a lamp, and he's strapped three different cannons together. Uh, <laughs> he's honestly, strapped as well. It just looks oh, like yeah. he's taped him up. Yep. Yeah, I, I salute the sheer gusto of this mm-hmm. one guy. And if I do a Citizen Sigma army, he will be my favorite person. I just <laughs> I like this aesthetic with the Cities of Sigma, where everything feels slightly bolted together. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I think that's really cool. Rivets and all, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like the and, metal bits that look like they've just been torn off fences. The fence yeah. design has been used for for that stuff. <laughs> like the uh, uh, on the the next to the the guy to the left of the Mongolian guy has the the nice leaf and a skull and a bit of twizzly vine coming yep. around. That yeah. in the metal design it looks great. Looks, yeah, it does look like if you, if these guys all died, you could get all their shields and just make a nice fence in front of your little cottage. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I really enjoy about these is that we've got these two like table leg stands at the bottom for the uh, <laughs> yeah. thing to stand on, and then some chains. Just because it's like that chain's not going to stop anything from getting in, you know? No, <laughs> it's like it's like a red velvet rope. It's it's there to like dissuade you. So it's like, no. come on now, Oaks, don't attack the legs. The <laughs> go, ah, fair play. They've got a little. I can't cross that. I'm not allowed to. Yeah, There's any a... you know, any chaos warrior worth their salt is going to get really close, just <laughs> drop down and hack at the ankles, right? Well, if you're a chaos warrior, you're just going to kick. Yeah, yeah. yeah kick the, the shins. Oh, that's yeah. mean. <laughs> you are evil. Yeah. <laughs> so I like the idea of like uh, goblins crawling underneath them, biting mm-hmm. their toes. Yeah. Why? Why are snotlins no longer a thing? Because that would be mm. perfect for them. anti fusilier deployment. Just send snotlins underneath. There's. One of the guys, um, it's the, you've got three of them, uh, you've got a lass on the far left, you've got a guy with like a headband around his head, and on his foot, it looks like it's either some kind of plant, or some kind of plant creature, and I can't... It's, a, it's an animal of some description, it looks like a yeah. lizardy fish mm, thing. Okay. Scorpion thing? It's odd, yeah. it looks like one of those yeah. each familiars, actually. Well, what it actually hmm. makes me think of is, do you remember in the Mordheim book, there was just these weird fish with yeah. legs? <laughs> that's kind of it. what it is. If you yeah. look really closely, that's what it is. It's it's a mm. fish with legs. I don't know what the, the, the shtick is there. Don't know. Don't care. I'm, don't know. I'm in It's love. cool. Yep. <laughs> More pets, that's... please, with miniatures, you know? Oh, well, that's why we're an Oric army where every uh, Oric has a fucking animal on the base. <laughs> <laughs> Up to and including, I have one of them chased like swatting away at an old Warhammer Quest bat. Oh, like, eh, it was bothering him. Um, Very cool. They're lovely. I yeah, I love these guys. They are, spot- and I love the fact that there's a there's a poor little bastard here whose job is to carry like ammo back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> that's brill. The black powder squires. It's, oh. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love the fact that like he's he's like he's, he's he actually has a special rule associated with them. It's yep. great. Yep. It's a, a well timed resupply run allows a unit to re-roll hit rolls once. Brilliant. For a battle. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. It looks very uh, put upon as well, which I like. The non emissary has chosen its target. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, that's right. That's him. Uh, he screw it. Yeah, he's gonna get Black so powder weapons smashed. against the Tyranids. Can you imagine? What's the mm. miniature of the guy who's used for always running away from the other miniatures? Oh yes, um, I can't remember his name, but um, yeah, oh. can you give, just 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 give him a box. Yeah, <laughs> jo- John. I think uh, Big D said Jonah. Is that his name? Johan. 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 That's Johan. right, Johan. Yeah, get the Johan <laughs> miniature. Give him a little box. There you go. He can help <laughs> out. Brilliant. I have a Johan in my um, my shelf of classic miniatures. You surprised <laughs> me, Adam, because doesn't he have pantaloons? Well, he's running away because uh, people are going to rip his pantaloons off and oh, stuff him down his God. fucking mouth. Oh, my um, God. I, I do want to say as well that uh, one of the things I'm very happy about is all the uh, miniatures that are um, 
going back to the old world and not being in the Cities of Sigma, they're all pantaloon based. So uh, <laughs> get fucked. Uh, oh my god. Uh, moving on then, uh, Fall of KD, a mega edition. I just wanted to bring this up because uh, it is super duper pretty. It's, it's huge as well, mm. isn't it? I mean, look at the mm. size of the book and everything. This is a massive, massive thing. The box yeah. almost feels too big for what it has in it. Yeah, yeah, it does a little bit. But it's, it's nice. Ni- it's nice, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's just a nice bit of fluff, isn't it? It's just a nice bit of fluff. I want to know, is Fall of Cadia funny? Because it is written by Robert Raff, who <laughs> yeah, did The Infinite and the Divine. <laughs> it probably does have a sense of humour somewhere behind yeah. it then, doesn't it? Yeah. I look forward to uh, laughing hysterically as uh, people die. Yeah. Um, Wait, well, isn't Trazen meant to be there at uh, the Fall of Cadia oh, yes. as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's, yeah, he's, he's yeah. not actually really doing anything. He's just no. watching, you know. He's just, you know. Seeing Maybe he'll he make some there. comments or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Also, didn't like, isn't he also after a great uh, Inquisitor Grey facts? Because she escaped him, didn't she? Yeah, so yeah. Probably after her as well. Get back in the box, woman. Yeah. Uh, oh, you cheeky Mings running away from me. Come back. He's like chasing after her. And she's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> as, yakety, as Yakety Sack starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just really like this. It's it's got a nice yeah, little medal. Nice. It's got a nice little dog yeah. tag. Really, really nice. I'll never buy it because uh, wow. you'll never you'll never be able to. No. The scalpers will get it first, and like say. like George says, it'll be like nine hundred or it's something. It's going to be expensive. Yeah. That yeah. Is. yeah. So to finish off, then uh, it's been a while since I brought one of these up. It's the forty years of Warhammer. Oh and yeah. It's Nagash. It's Nagash. And I think still we don't have it. I, I still need to get this mini. No, he's, I don't have Nagash actually. He's so good. He looks um, it. He's he's just he's beautiful. He's a beautiful. Baby. Oh, no, but this one's better. The original. Oh, <laughs> see, this is why I, I wanted to just take some time and just really soak in the beauty of that original <laughs> Nagash miniature. Jesus. Um, I mean, nothing really says you know three friends enjoying each other's company like staring at Bozo <laughs> the War Clown here. I was say, to, wow. to be fair. Like, Nagash has never had bad artwork from even the silly no. clown miniature. The the artwork from in the, the in the book was, a, oh, was great. really good. Yeah. It was it's so absolutely good. awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean the original um Nagash artwork from the um the ba- the, the battle tome undead mm-hmm. from that edition of Warhammer is amazing. It looks nothing like this, I can tell you. <laughs> nothing <laughs> like it. Have you guys ever seen the original head? Yes. The, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that it's, looked actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It looked really nice. It's just that uh, <laughs> whoever it was who was in charge of the design studio at the time went, nope, has to be a skull. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what they got. Yeah. I mean, yeesh. Well, it, it was the joke, wasn't it, that uh, to mm-hmm. make the worst possible head sculpt they could think of. <laughs> So they went for the other one instead, the one that was wow. much, much cooler. And unfortunately, that was the one that stuck. Yeah. It's weird because there's some interesting visual choices in here that I think is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Like the the hat is not awful. It's no, maybe a little no. silly. It, it's mainly the face. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, it could have worked. The hat could yeah. have worked. It needs something to frame the face. It needs like the original artwork has hair, you know, yeah. like long hair yeah. coming down to frame the face, and then it would have worked. But as it stands... I think the problem is that if you consider what that would look like with flesh mm-hmm. on the bones, yeah, he's a he's a thick man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh, big. Boy. Do you remember how powerful he was back then? Oh god, yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. He he, I mean, he was you know, obviously he was like he was the Sauron of the setting back then, wasn't he? That was yeah. very very much so. Um, there was a lot of overlap between him and Sauron actually in terms of like their mythology and whatnot, but. Um, he was insane. If you he he was only for like narrative battles. You didn't really seri- play like a serious battle with Nagash on on the table. No, no, he was. Uh, well, that was the thing. Was you could only play it if it was like a historic battle because yeah. uh, you know, yeah. there was all sorts of rules to stop you from doing him. And that was the only way it made sense as well yeah. because he could like he could literally raise undead armies in a turn, and he could like <laughs> if he cast Hand of Dust in certain mm-hmm. editions, it killed like whatever he cast it at. Do I you guess remember- it's thematic. But yeah, not fair. Rules. Do you remember the one-two punch of Hand of Dust and Van Hal's Dance Macabre? 
Oh, well, yes. He, I remember it well. I raise it well. charge. Mm. Raise double charge. Raise <laughs> yeah. double charge. Yeah. And you, I think the maximum you could do was you could end up with 300 skeletons by turn three. So, <laughs> so stupid. Yeah. I it mean, was like insane. The, madness. Mm, oh, man. I, I do. It. He's not a good sculpt, but I do have a real soft spot for him. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, like, his story is one of the very first I ever read mm -hmm. for Fantasy Battle, to be honest. So, yeah, I've always had a soft spot for Nagash. Um, and this was, you know, I did have this miniature way back when it was lead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do like the picture that they put next to him. Rather than using the really cool Mark Gibbons one, they just went for the one that was like, yeah, a lot of the Rings movies are doing really well. So, yeah. Uh, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's put let, that one up, yeah. Yeah, let, let, let's just get a Lord of the Rings style uh, Nagash drawn. Yeah. 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 See, that to me just looks like a White King rather than yeah. Nagash. Mm -hmm. Rather than Nagash, yeah. yeah. Definitely. It, it, it's weird how little it actually looks like any form of Nagash that mm -hmm. we've ever seen. It's a... Uh, it's one of those ones where I'm I'm not entirely sure that was meant to be Nagash. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. But my god, the new I mean the current miniature is something oh, special, it's, isn't it? It's, it's so good. It's, it's glorious. So, that's what the Lord of the Undead, the God of the Undead, was supposed to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody and, uh, ever painted the book he's holding as the yellow pages? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a very expensive joke to do. I'm sure someone must have done it as the Necronomicon and the Evil Dead at some point, surely. And, and I say that as somebody who bought Nagash and uh, a load of parts to uh, turn him into Drakenfels. Into Drakenfels, <laughs> yeah, that's right. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, that miniature is gorgeous. I oh, say yeah. miniature. He, he's not small. He's. No. Uh, yeah. And he's still a badass. I mean, he's still oh, yeah. very, very, very nasty in the game. And again, oh, get really, one you should kind of only play him in narrative battles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do like the fact as well that this article does say that uh, rumor has it there was a se second secret head of such disturbing malevolence <laughs> that it did not make it to production. This was locked away to preserve the minds of all Warhammer fans. Uh, but fans of Forbidden Law might be able to Google it. Oh yes, yes. It's the, the pictures out there, aren't there? Of the oh of yeah, the head that you know the alternative head. Yeah, and it is, is it uh, legal reasons that they're not allowed to show it? Is it because it wasn't licensed? No, nah, I think they're just being silly. They're just being coy, okay. aren't they? You know? Yeah. I wondered yeah, if there was like a legal reason, like because it wasn't used, they don't actually have the rights to it, so it's not actually useful. maybe because the rights might have just reverted back to the sculptor for a mm, Yeah, that's um, a fair point, actually. Yeah, it might yeah. be that. Gary Morley, I think. Yeah. I just it? like with like the new version, they just went make the hat bigger. Big hat, be big. <laughs> Make the hat as big as possible. Well, we don't have Chaos Dwarves anymore, so... No, so someone build. somewhere <laughs> has to have the biggest hat in the game, <laughs> don't they? Just, just you wait. One day it'll be my turn. <laughs> <laughs> my Chaos Dwarves will turn up and they'll be have the biggest hats. There'll be one that's just going to be feet hanging out of a hat. Oh that, my God. That'll be it. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, as we all know, the bigger the hat, the bigger the arse. And... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Nagash is a big old arsehole, mm -hmm. and uh, as is the Pope. So, moving on quickly, as I'll probably get sued, that is everything for this evening. Yes. Uh, guys, fellas, wow. fellow fluffers, what has been your highlight of this entire um entire evening what's the thing that stood out for you the most oh the uh, lictors yeah. <laughs> so, yeah the tyranids in general mm -hmm. just amazing i mean uh, if, I'm, I'm loving this i'm loving this it's a good good time to be in for, to 40k at the moment <laughs> yeah it's always a good time to be in 40k it's never yeah. a good time to be aos is it <laughs> no not so much oh well cities mm. of sigma is coming yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. There's yeah. the stuff down the line, and there's that yeah. ongoing narrative going on. They, they do look amazing, and uh, I love them to bits. So uh, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, one of the lads at work's gone into Warhammer recently, and uh, he's decided to go Stormcast. And yeah. it's uh, hi Ben. It's uh, not taking much work to just start pointing him towards. You could always have Seraphon as an allied army, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm helping. Uh, <laughs> With all that being said, then, Andy. Me. Can you tell us where people can find you if they wanted so, so badly to feast upon your knowledge? Uh, you can come over to Twitch and YouTube. 
uh, for Decay Dandy, Rotten Flesh of a Human Being, uh, over on Twitter. It's Decay Dandy as well. On the Moonbase 2 podcast as well, where me and Mikey each and every Sunday talk about Transformers for the week. Mm-hmm. And George, where can people find you if they would like to feast upon your knowledge on where to find Andy to feast upon his knowledge? <laughs> uh, you can find me over at YouTube on Exaggerated Elegy uh, and also on Our Lives in Horror, two channels at the moment. Uh, you can find links to all of my published work over at strangeplaygrounds.com. There's going to be two new short stories coming out very soon in uh, Kevin J. Kennedy Productions. I will I will. Uh, put links up to those nearer the time and uh at the moment you can you can still talk to me over on the trash fire that is twitter at enigmatic elegy how long that's going to last i'm not entirely sure but uh, i think that's it for me at the moment fair enough um would you like to tell the people the wonderful uh three word synopsis you use for a short story that you're having published oh my uh my queer lovecraftian kaiju story that is the best thing I've heard in weeks. That's what it is. Yep. I, I, honestly, I'm going to have to buy that book because I need to know what that entails. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> I, I need to know, George. You've, you've done an amazing job of advertising there by piquing my interest. It's a queer with... Lovecraftian kaiju horror story. I, 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 need, to, I need to read it. That's making make me have to buy things that's, <laughs> that's not, fair. not fair as for myself uh, you can find the fluff and hammer on twitter facebook instagram and youtube under amazingly the fluff and hammer you can find my personal things at ad nickel n-i-c-o-l dot weebly dot com that's where all i my artwork and my uh, audio books and my short stories all go. Um, and you can find me on Twitter at Grufflock, uh, where I'm either just putting up weird out of context comic book panels, which <laughs> seems to be a thing I've started doing, or um, talking about the fact that I appear to be getting stalked by Darla from Buffy because she has been in three films that I've watched recently back to back. Uh, and it's not like they're from the same time either one was The Circle a film that came out last year that's a closed room um, psychological thriller and the other was George of the Jungle 2 so oh my god oh wow wow George of the Jungle 2 is a bad movie yes yeah Yeah, it's almost predestined to be so Mm -hmm. yeah was it uh, it direct to VHS it wasn't in cinema was it (laughs) I, I, looking at the sound sets that they're using and the fact they're not filming on location, <laughs> I would say so. Yeah. Uh, but it but it does star um, Sandman, so that's good mm. from uh, Spider Man Three. So yeah, that's good. Ah. He's a looks like a handsome man who's just been in a wind tunnel. It's very weird. <laughs> uh, also, we also watched all of the Mission Impossible films recently, and I've uh, come to the conclusion that Jeremy Renner looks like a handsome man who's been stung by bees. So. <laughs> 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 with all that being said we'll get out of here thank you so much for listening if indeed you still are good night bye bye nah. and we're done hey, fuck.